Welcome to Moonbase 2. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Moonbase 2 podcast. My name's Andy, Corporate Commander TFW, and I'm joined here this week by the hand of truth and justice himself. He touch you, he'll feel you, he'll stroke you. It's Mikey G. Wolfie 3. Hello, Mikey. It's not illegal if it's for justice. That's right, or peace. Mm. <laughs> How's it going this week, Mr. Mikey? Clearly, uh, I need an alibi, but apart mm-hmm. from that, uh, no, it's all right, it's all right. How's it? How is young Andy today? Yeah, yeah, this day has been okay. It's not been a cheerful day outside in the world where the weather was, but uh, mm. it's been okay in the, the, the home of Andy. So that's well, that's okay by my books. Are you uh, all like being blown around by storms and everything else? Or is it a dreaded sun? No, oh, no, it's just grey. Just, ah. you know, the UK perpetual grey, which I'm okay <laughs> with. I don't mind the perpetual grey of the UK. Uh, but we're here not to talk about the weather. This ain't no fancy weather show uh we're here to talk about transformers <laughs> if we were doing the weather it would be like that family guy guy family oh guy guy. yeah yeah the angry guy yeah <laughs> yeah it's, 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 it's cold it's raining sideways <laughs> it raining sideways he was cool. it's cold <laughs> we're outside today <laughs> you enable the cookies <laughs> uh transformers though mikey they exist they exist i know mikey and you know that you collect terrible ornaments. This is your dark secret. I think you have to be confused with another podcast. No, you you make the horrible, uh, horrific mistake by buying terrible, shitty looking ornaments, and then you keep telling me how good they are. Again, I'm fairly certain I'm not Yoshi. I don't know. You sound American to me. I sound American to most people. That's not anything new. And by that, I mean wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yoshi, yeah. I apologize for Andy's casual racism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on, <laughs> but uh, on on the the side of the shitty ornaments, we have a new ornament. Or, well, no, it is new, but it's based on something old. It is the Christmas Transformers Hallmark G1 Bumblebee uh, in his robot mode from the G1 toy, which was his famous. Um, fancy superposable dynamic toy that he was is he is, still is is was <laughs> uh mikey yes how much would you pay for what i assume because i don't think these transform do they but he no, certainly and, don't well i don't know but i do know that that's not a real ornament that's a cad model that is true that is, that is so true. weird to me to see a cad model model of the original bumblebee Actually, you make a fair point. They even have uh, they've done the sticker for the back as well. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, yeah, because probably odd. I think it's fair to say that it won't look this good. And I say that no. on the basis that every time we've had uh, the ornaments from Hallmark and we've seen the the actual product, they've always looked um, shit. shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I wouldn't say it's out of the realms of possibility that this might not look as clean, tidy, accurate. Well yeah, painted Something. correctly, <laughs> as it is at the moment. Uh, oh, the, it's the blurb that sells this. Uh, what's the blurb, Mikey? Read me the Wh- blurb. <clears throat> Nimble and small, Bumblebee is capable of stealth and action that his larger counterparts and Decepticons cannot match. Fans of the classic Transformers toys and cartoon will rele- relive the excitement of childhood each holiday season as they unbox this Christmas tree ornament featuring the courageous Autobot. This art is crafted. Christmas tree ornament comes pre-packaged in a box for easy gift giving, <laughs> preservation and storage, dated 2019 and copyright, with unparalleled artistry and exceptional detail. Each mm. festive and collectible keepsake, capital K, ornament is made for years, years, literal years of celebration, for preserving precious memories to commemorate special milestones and interest. There's a hallmark ornament for everyone on your guest list gift list <laughs> hallmark has been your family owned creator of greeting cards gifts gift wrap gift 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 and gifting for more than a hundred years <laughs> we know where you live we take deep personal pride in helping individuals spend money on our stuff get a plastic tree as well it has no lead we removed it because we had a child lick it as a test He's you may th- 
You may think the last bit was fake, like Mikey made that up, but there is a natural <laughs> thing that says plastic tree ornament is lead yep. free. <laughs> so, Isn't I mean, that that's nice? good. Isn't and... that nice that they feel the need to point that out? Yeah, in 2019. With unparalleled artistry. Yeah. Well, the unparalleled artistry, I feel, is uh, maybe a bit of a stretching of the truth. Well, yeah, having seen their the previous product. stuff, it's definitely unparalleled. Yes. No, well, you're, you're quite right. They didn't say it was good. They did just <laughs> say it was unparalleled. So, I mean, that that is fair. Uh, oh. It is rocking out for $16.99. So $17 effectively. I don't know if that includes tax or not. Probably not. I don't, I don't know how much. I don't know works. because basically we don't have the whole, like, here's the price and then add tax. We just have... Here's the price. The price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the worst thing is, Mikey, changes state by state. Yeah, that's weird. It is weird. <laughs> it, it's weird by you're our tiny country, country you're standard. The, you're the same country. Yep. Not the same state. Friggin' Denial is the only state. <laughs> uh, and it's being released on the 13th of July of 2019. So, you know, just in time for Christmas. One ah, say. Good. The classic July Christmas shopping. I That's love right. that. That's right. Uh, maybe they... Ho- I, I, I can't imagine they hock the price up just before Christmas. But that you would buy... amuse me if they did. That wonderful time when you buy everything in the summer so you don't have to buy it at Christmas. And then your child wants something that is only available in November or December. And you're staring at them. Staring at them with that expression of... I brought you into this world, and you're about to go away from it. Ah, you say that, Mikey, but there are those famous TV magazines where you can buy all your Christmas stuff in January and just pay it off uh, for the entire year. True, but again, what if something comes out in November, December that costs you $100, but the little shit won't stop asking for it? That's that's why I've never quite understood why you'd go (laughs) through... What's it called? Park Savers? Is that who it is? God only knows. Something like that. I've never, I've, I've, even as a kid, I was like, but what if I want something that isn't out yet? <laughs> yeah. It's like, don't worry, kids, you'll get it next January. Yeah, like fidget spinners. Christmas. Remember when fidget spinners Christmas. just came out of nowhere? Ah, oh, do oh, don't talk to me. Don't yeah. talk. Like, what happened to them? The same thing happened to everything else. Like, I remember Tamagotchis with it because like everyone was obsessed with them that one Christmas. You mean yeah. recent, or do you mean, like, in the past? No, when I was small. Um, okay. So, it was just like, that was the one, and just like, if your child was going Tamagotchis, by God, you didn't buy, you weren't buying them in the summer. You were rushing down at Christmas going like, shit, he wants this shit Japanese thing. See, we kind of, uh, in my school at least, we kind of avoided Tamagotchis and just went straight to Digimon, uh, not, yeah, to Digimon. Because everyone oh, was like, I, I th- I'm pretty sure that yeah. we skipped it because we were like, oh, do you, do you want these animals? And you want these animals to fucking kill each other? And we were like, kill them! Kill them! Uh, it was Tamag- <laughs> Tamagotchis and then Pokemon. Like, Digimon mm-hmm. never, never made it into our school. Ah, uh, okay. So. See, bef- before, before like, uh, the Digimon came, we had to just wrestle seagulls to fight each other. Ah, uh, well. Oh, God, <laughs> I just remember the big Pokemon of, uh, sort of controversy of our school. Oh, was this some... for for cards? Was it? Because no, no, this is being... the, the actual game. Oh, there really? Were, okay. Again, we never them. got the game. We got the mm. the card game, but we didn't get like. No, I'm, God, no. I'm guessing card. our our school was too stringent on don't fucking bring a Game Boy in. <laughs> uh, we never had card games in our one. Like, I oh, never wow. really played the card game. But the two big controversies were one boy who was insisting he had a Mew, insisting oh, he nah. had a Mew, and then he got it through a hack. Nah. That he, he figured out himself. And everyone goes like, show us your game. And just like, no, if, uh, I can't bring it into school. And we when he'd say, we can't bring it into school, and suddenly everyone's bag would open and all their Game Boys would just go crashing on the table. I'm just like, <laughs> really? Really? And the teacher would be standing there looking there just like, fucking kids in their games. Um, fucking and the other nerds. One, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nerds! Give me my Rubik's Cube. I remember good, wholesome childhood. But the real one was when someone borrowed a gate because, like, their friend said, oh, I've got, like, all 150. Isn't that great? Oh, yeah, it's great. Um, Can I borrow it and do the whole trade over thing and then um, just fill up my Pokedex? And, mm. Okay. And we found out later that what he'd done is he'd transferred all the Pokemon over, swapped them all with Pidgeys. <laughs> Every <laughs> single one. And this guy had a you because he went to an event. So, so hang on, did this guy have 150 Pidgeys? 151. Oh my god, that's amazing! <laughs> and then, and then he got the game back, and then he just like would not even admit he did it for ages and ages and ages. And it was just like this wonderful thing of just like your man was really pissed because he could because like I think someone said, "Oh, you can restart the game." Can't get the Mew again. No, that's true. And 
yeah, they they weren't friends after that. I like the idea. Ah, well, you know, maybe they're just turned into Pidgeys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was a glitch. Oh, the glitch. It was a wee glitch, I think. Oh, Ooh. it was missing now. It was missing now the whole time. <laughs> that was it, yep. Did you try and get him? That can glitch your game. Turn yep. everything to Pidgeys. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a good story. See, I was yeah. just going to... For my, my stupid kid story, I was going to say there was a, a kid who was kind of my friend, but I kind of got sick of all of his lying. Um <laughs> Because fuck, he lied a lot. He he mm. kept like perpetually telling me uh, often that you could play as Pterosaur in the Beast Wars game and uh, was Benator throughout the entire game. And I was like, show me, show me. Never did. I knew someone who did that with Tomb Raider, but they would just said like, if you do like X Y Z, what what what, you'll she'll go naked. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that was just the exploding code, wasn't it? Yeah. And yeah. then at the end, like, for Team Raider 3, they were just like, fine, here's a fucking cheat to turn her naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giving kids what they want. Yeah, I think they were just so sick of having, like, messages sent. I remember the magazines were full of it, just like, there's no way to make her naked in the game. <laughs> yes, there is. There is. Tommy told me there was a way. <laughs> oh, like, man, back in day. eight years old. You should not be playing this game. Shut up and give me the nudes. The thing is, no one cared because the games were so bad for the graphics, really. You know, let's yeah, be but honest. It was, it was the mid-90s, the and... Because I remember, like, two, Lara Croft used to show up in, like, paper advertising and stuff. That's true, And they, yeah. they'd be using the model where her breasts were basically entire her, her entire upper torso. That's right, yeah. It was so nightmarish. I think that was it. Everyone just like, listen, if you get it in-game, you'll be there'll be polygons and you'll be able to cut yourself on them. Woo! But, Living the dream. Yeah, but listen, Andy, this was still an age where people played Metal Gear Solid largely to see a bum wiggle. See, I played it because I thought it was fun. <laughs> yeah, but there were people who didn't. They played yeah. it because they saw in game magazines, if I go through this thing five times, she'll be in her underwear one out of every 20 or something like oh, that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she was in her panties when and, she And I, I distinctly remember just like, remember, when she's walking in front of you, zoom in, you'll be able to see her bum wiggle. <laughs> I remember that distinctly. Well, I also remember like, people reading. getting so pissed. At... Oh, God. There was this one PlayStation magazine, and like every other page was a half-naked lady. Occasionally a naked lady. So I bought that magazine a lot. Hmm. Um, Filthy but, like, Mikey. Basically, you bought official PlayStation magazine when if you were a gamer, and you bought the other one if you weren't tall enough to reach the Playboys. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it was back in day. Because people never looked inside those magazines to... When they were putting them out, they never realized what the content was. Oh, oh so, dear! And the game and the people who made those magazines knew it. <laughs> That's how they got you. Uh, yep. I mean, there, there's not much news this week. This is why we kind of no. went off. <laughs> the bringing it all the way point. back, <laughs> bringing it back. Uh, so, uh, anything else to say on Bumblebee the the ornament, Mikey? I want to see Yoshi's one. When okay, get yeah. Trips to the bag. stores. It'll happen. <laughs> uh, right, next bit of crappy news, because th there are more. Uh, mm. I read this incorrectly the first time I, I, I looked at the story. Uh, oh, yeah. This is Transformers Evergreen Stuck on Stories. What do you think I read this as, Mikey, originally, by accident? Stuck on Tories? No, suck on these stories. I was like, <laughs> what do you mean, suck on these stories? <laughs> <laughs> and then I kept looking at these things, and I was like, "Why? Why is it telling me to suck on them? And why is it? Why, why are there stories around sucking on them?" Can I also follow up? Why is there stories? And then it made it worse because before I I reread uh, the actual title, and uh, it said "game with the <laughs> suction cup," and I was like, "Oh no, oh, whoa!" <laughs> and it, and this sounds like this sounds like an adult toy. It's it's oh. all. <laughs> but no, it it is stuck on stories, and it made a lot more sense when I saw suction cup toy. Well, partially, I don't know. I why was going to say could... a lot more, maybe an exaggeration. Well, it it made it less like oh god to oh okay, why? But not oh god. Uh, I don't know why kids would really care about suction cup toys. This isn't you know the forties. I don't know. There's something fun about sticking something to a window, but usually if, only if it's something that shouldn't be stuck. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I suppose you don't get those uh, sticky men, I suppose, you, when uh, you threw them against the windows and they just kind yeah, of that was... slowly fell down. Yeah, I liked watching them fall. <laughs> Jesus, it's bleak. 
Uh, sometimes so, they'd hit the bottom of the window and keep going, but they couldn't stick to the you, wall. You don't. You only have them for like a day, and then they'd just be covered in fluff, and they'd never work again. They would yeah, but like I, 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 what was that ball? You could just like hurl it. Though. There was like something similar. That was a ball, and you just hurled it at stuff. It was a baseball, uh, and was the wall your sister? I was going to say I did kind of follow them around trying to get it to stick to them. <laughs> Didn't work, but. Mikey, the best brother. Uh, <laughs> so, stuck on stories. Uh, this is a fun, colourful activity book and board game for kids, including ten cool, detailed suction cup models uh, after the heads of Transformers. Uh, Optimus Prime, Megatron, Soundwave, Windblade, Hot Rod, Shockwave, Starscream, Bumblebee, Ratchet, and Hound, all in the evergreen designs. Uh, so, the, the little Hound. blurb. Yeah, Hound. Hound. A kid's favourite favorite hound can we all stop pretending hound matters please? Ah, he's getting a masterpiece toy one day mikey yeah one day. but he still doesn't matter he had that one Cause... time in that one episode where he where he rubbed spike yeah 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 all right so he mattered as he was our early introduction to homosexuality and transformers <laughs> see i was gonna say that's why he was never allowed back, back <laughs> to be spike's friend again and bumblebee took over got it got it, it they snuck it in under the pilot and then someone went wa- watched it and was like nope <laughs> Switch him out. <laughs> Switch him out. Never use him again. <laughs> Get the yellow one. <laughs> uh, the blurb goes, use the suction cup characters and your imagination to bring these stuck on... No, I almost said suck again. Stuck on stories to life. Read the stories and complete the games. Then have fun uh, playing the board game with your friends! Exclamation mark. I imagine if you have this, you might not have many friends. How big is that board? It's uh, it, it the dimensions are eight by ten, so I imagine that's uh, inches. That's probably the board, yeah, yeah, yeah. That must be the board size, I would guess. Kind of uh, like a really bad snakes and ladders. Probably, maybe. Uh, it's ten pages, so it's, it's not many. Hmm. Um, yeah, Mikey. Uh, I mean, s- suck on these stories. What do you think? It's kind of an inventive idea of here's the storybook and here's like, oh, here's these character profiles. But now you can put the 3D pictures on, <laughs> the stuck on, except that you have to presumably wet those. So eventually you will ruin your book. Uh, unless the pages are like glossy, so the, the, they've got or, that kind of sticky gloss to them. Do you think they thought that far ahead, Andy? I don't know. I don't, I don't know <laughs> why this is a thing, to be honest. You know? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's different. No, looking at the pages, they look like they are that that thicker material that they have in like really young kids' books. Duh. So it looks like they they probably would work well enough, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know who you get these for because I don't know how how big these suction cup things are, so you can't go too young. It Maybe this is plus. like you. I bet a three year old could it, swallow it's more it. More like, though. how do I put this? Why don't you just get your three year old a proper game? Like Doom. any other board game <laughs> known to man, or a saucepan <laughs> with a drum. Ah, yes, the the tried and true. Because I guarantee you that that will be more entertaining in the long run. Mm, perhaps not perhaps. for you. Before no, you oh no, yeah, certainly not for you, Jesus. <laughs> uh pff, yeah, I I got I got no else. So Mikey, mm. why yes. not take us away with the next bit of news? So yeah, into third party. Shockwave Lab has something weird. Um, so SL23 is announced. This is an LED matrix core intended for Optimal Optimus and Rodimus Unicronus. So these are uh, matrix, sculpted matrices that are intended to replace the uh, Titan Masters that go into the matrixes that come with the leader class figures. Um, so they use uh, Optimal, Optimus, and Rodimus here, but presumably, like, this will work fine with an Optimus. Um, and yeah, they just sort of go in, and the difference here is that they have LEDs. Uh, purple for evil and blue for good. So, yeah, you can stick them in there. They'll look a bit more matrixy than having a weird, oh, pretty matrixy, oh no, I'm actually a godhead thing in there. <laughs> um... And yeah, I didn't realize there was a demand for this. Demand might not be the right term for it. Uh, maybe a, an look. interest is probably uh, as far as I would go, maybe. Demand uh, seems like it's maybe giving it a bit too much of a push, but I could be wrong. People I could are be ordering them. Wrong. 
Oh, I'm sure, yeah. People are happy. Like, there's someone who just says, need these. <laughs> I need four. All right. Four. Well, maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know. That man. Oh, yeah, God, that, man had, that man has an amazing profile picture. Hmm. Yeah. That little cat has a mustache. Yeah, it has a pretty boss mustache. Yeah. All right, yeah. How much is it, do we know? Uh, not that I know. They're just from Widow. Oh, okay. Does that mean you can download them? I don't know. I guess we'll Down, find out. You, okay, Andy, you can't download physical objects. This You've been watching too much Star Trek. No, no, you can, because then you put them into a 3D printer and it prints them out. So you yeah, can download does stuff. That doesn't print out LEDs. No, it, it might. it wouldn't print off the components, but it would print off the shell for it. Okay, Andy, Andy, you need to... You need to come back to me. I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. A- I'm Andy, right here. Come, ba- come, come back, Andy. Come back I'm good, us. Mikey. Come back right to us, here. Andy. <laughs> Let me go, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go where the LEDs are 3D. <laughs> um, shall I move us on, Mikey? Because I, I, I got nothing really to add to. Yo, d- dims, get some lights yeah. in them. Yeah. Take us uh, on. Magic Square, Mikey. Magic Maybe Square Toys. Light of freedom they are doing mm. the masterpiece scaled optimus prime uh and As we is get everyone else <laughs> yes but they're not only doing their version of masterpiece optimus prime they're also doing a white version a black version and a metallic version because you don't have enough versions of optimus prime in your life so it might uh you don't uh because the the white version which is the ms o one w uh is based off of of the ultra magnus Shockingly. The MS-01B uh, Evil Nemesis Prime which is a bit judgmental. Good Nemesis Prime. Yeah, exactly. Uh, The MS-01X is the metallic finish. So you can I guess pick your poison. Do you like him shiny? Do you like him matte? Do you like him black? Or do you like him white? Electroplating. Yeah, at least they're doing it all in one go I suppose where they're going Yeah. There you go. There you no, go. Sh- All of them. Go, we're, no, we're not gonna, shut up. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna <laughs> drag this out over the next like five or six months and go. Oh well, there's another one. Oh, well, there's another one. It's just there you go. That's all of them. Boom. We're done. Mm. We're out. Uh, do any of these tickle you, your sausage, Mister Mikey? Mm, like any yeah. that you prefer over the base prime? I mean, the, I mean, that's just basically which color scheme they usually like more. Yep. Like the metallic thing is making me think the metallic armor from Power Rangers. Oh, oh wow, all right. They've got their upgrade. <laughs> it's slightly shinier. Mm-hmm. Pay extra money. Money. Buy, buy the same toy, but for slight more shine. <laughs> um, None of these really do it for me, I'll be honest. So just the mold in general, do you mean? Or just the, I mean, the colors or what? The colors. Like, I hear the mold's good in terms of engineering, but there's well, also It's this, not out yet, though, is it? And, no, no, I think it is. The main is one. I oh, think so, because okay. I remember the Canadian one doing some talks about it not a video but he was talking about it okay uh, but it's just for me it's like oh look a masterpiece optimus prime in g1 style there by the end of the year there'll be three of these minimum you mean from the same company oh wait no you don't <laughs> yeah so i'm just like eh, you've killed my enthusiasm with oversaturation one one thing i suppose to mention about the metallic mm. finish version is he doesn't at least in these images he doesn't have the little yellow bits on his forearms at all they've they've <gasps> Just been wiped out. Why would I even bother? I I know it's maybe something to point out. If you depending how accurate you like your primes, mm. that could that could be a deal breaker. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm not too fussed on it, obviously. But uh, yo, at least they've they've shipped them up. Well, not shipped them, but they've they've put them out there for the public all to look at. So yay! Well, yay! I'll do this one as well because that one story was fairly quick. Mr. Mikey, we're heading over to Japan for some crazy woo-woo. Crazy woo-woo? Crazy woo-woo. Uh, a while ago, we talked about the prototype image uh, for their Star Convoy that they were going to be doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now we have uh, coloured and physical looking done-ish, I guess, production photos of said Star Convoy. And we can see what little Optimus Prime looks like as well. Uh, and we also have some... Teaser images, Mikey, for two future projects. Two future projects which may be milking the sack of uh, the Transformers fandom. That's right. Uh, So, these will be uh, sold exclusively via the Takara Otomi Mall. Are they? 
well, that's what it says, but it but it won't it's be the wrong. case. It is. It's wrong. Why is it wrong, Mikey? Because Hasbro Pulse has him. Where? What? Hasbro what? Hasbro Pulse. What's Hasbro Pulse? Hasbro Pulse, the brand new Hasbro online shop. Oh. Which is where basically what Hasbro Toy Shop turned into. Oh, and okay. Which is also doing Power Rangers. Woo! <laughs> but yes, this is the first time it's ever happened that a Japanese exclusive is getting a simultaneous release in uh, in the West. <laughs> Does it, did it say then if it will be in Japanese packaging and like quality or will Apparently, America not be toy, like, touching it? By the, by the sounds of it, it's basically they're just, it's the same Bring toy. They're just okay. shipping it. But for four dollars more. But will it? Um. But will it have the <laughs> the second mode of comic with it? In the, in if the they West. open the boxes to remove that, I will find <laughs> each and every one of them. Ah, they don't want this. It's the instructions, and it's got a comic which no one understands because it's no, no. speak, it, and it's like, oh it, no. It's the instructions. They're vaguely intelligible. Quick, swap them out. <laughs> <laughs> Black and white, <laughs> but mostly grey. Mm. Ugh. It could happen. You laugh, yeah. but it could happen. <laughs> uh, so, before we talk about the teaser images, Mikey, what do you think of what we see of Star Convoy and uh, what I'm going to call Action Master Optimus Prime? Because he seems to be Yellow very eyed. Action Master-y. I- Eyes of Madness Optimus Prime. That's right. Um. The, all right, so Small Prime, they tried. It's better than Orion Pax. I kind of like Orion more. I don't. Honest, but I, I never liked the design of Orion, so... Like, that's not it. Well, like, that's neither here nor there. But as a, like, what this is, like, here's Orion's body, and now translate it into Optimus Prime. So none of the proportions kind of work right. Mm. And his chest is hilariously flat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got one flat boob. Yeah, I like the head sculpt quite a bit, but mm-hmm. it's like, we did our best with what we had. That's what this is to me. Um, but... Um, Star Convoy I think looks pretty solid um, I think it was a clever retool um, they've done quite a bit of work in it in all honesty um, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out mm. Andy what about you uh, so I, so I, I don't mind the little Action Master Optimus Prime because I get away with his weird proportions by saying it is the Action Master version so it's you know weird anyway uh the fact that he can split his ion blaster and shove the matrix in between the the two barrels points of the gun god power that's weird right cool (laughs) i love it i'm not sure i'd say cool but it's weird (laughs) i'm not i'm not sure i'd say cool no he's shooting you with knowledge andy yeah, I guess, yeah. He is dropping knowledge bombs. <laughs> See if it was a rocket launcher. No, that'd be <laughs> that'd be something else. Then he would be dropping knowledge bombs. <laughs> rockets. Uh, I think the problem I have with this is I wasn't really enamored when I I touched the Optimus Prime mold in general. Mm. So I don't know, even if it is a very fancy redo into Star Convoy, who's never had a toy since the original version of him. Mm. That is a that is a pusher to make me more interested, but then I think, yeah, but it's a Mulder. You don't really care that much about it, Andy. Do you really want it? I'm like, I don't know. Especially since it's expensive. Since it's expensive, mm. uh, because Star Convoy is priced at eighty five hundred yen. That's excluding tax, of course. So that's basically seventy six twenty one U S dollars. It's coming out in September. So if you're mm. interested, you can do that. Uh, so yeah, that that kind of puts me a little bit at the. Uh, oh, I'm probably not. Also, it's another Optimus Prime. No, no it's Star Convoy though, Andy. He's the same. He's no, the same. Star Convoy. Pay a potato, potato. Uh, two silhouettes though were shown off as well, Mikey. Mm. And uh, people have all. I mean, I don't think it was that hard to deduce who these could be, really. Mm. Uh, and people have already put names to silhouettes, so it seems that we are getting um, Turtler. 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 Tortolo. Out of out... the hunger mold, I'm guessing? That's what it looks like from his knees, at least, and mm. from the shoulders that you can see. Uh, so they're going to have to have done a decent amount of remolding to make him turtly. Yeah. Uh, I, ho- I way, hope that's... they've made him turtly. For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, Snaptrap. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Also, Piranicon. <laughs> yeah, or, I suppose so. uh, What was his name in Japan? Was it just Turtler? Because Turtler was, oh, uh, it was um God Poseidon. See, uh, God Poseidon. God Neptune. Yeah, no, no it was no, God, God, ne- King, King, God King Neptune Poseidon. was pirate version. King Poseidon. King Poseidon. There we go. God yeah. Neptune was the better version. That's right. Oh damn! <laughs> it was a pirate. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm wondering if the shield on his arm is just the stupid shitty foot piece that um, Hungar came with, or if no. it's going to be used as part of the, I'm going to make this into the shell, the so back. don't worry. That's the shell. I, I hope so. Look, there's a cannon there. He does have something on his arm, though, mm. is what I'm saying. Yeah. He obviously has a backpack. He he mm. has extra guns on his back, but I think, there is something on the arm as well. I think that's the cannon. I, I I think that's a shield a, a shield made out of turtle back. Ugh, words. Yeah, that makes um, sense. I wonder if he'll be more convincing in alt mode than hunger was. Eh, well, that's that's the worry. Like, are they going to be able to get that shape of hunger, which was kind of iffy, into yeah, a somewhat turtle shaped? Well, like I'm thinking, like the legs could be. Uh, what are they going to do with the legs of this one? Because they're going to have to go away somehow. I imagine you, there's probably not going to be a huge amount of transformation here. I think we can assume that he's going to lie down face forward. Yeah, I mean, but I'm just trying to figure out, could you, so, like, just turn his legs into turtle legs? What, you know, because in Hunger, they don't do anything. They're, they're, they're heads, with, yeah. They're, yeah. I imagine you'll be able to, like, uh, you, you, like, grab the front of the legs, maybe twist them around so the mm. knees are facing backwards, and then you might be able to fold them in, fold them in on themselves. Yeah, yeah. It shortens them up, maybe. Form the belly, maybe. Yeah. Maybe the knees become the foot part. Oh, that would be neat. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, interesting, though. Like, the mm. idea of it. Uh, I, th- I think it's safe to assume he's not going to be sold on his own. He will probably get his little buddies. I did add or they're going to like they're they're going to release them over a period of time. In, maybe in multi packs, maybe. But... That'd be alright, because the worst thing you could do is go, well, the only actual character was Turtler. Yeah, the other I'm... ones were just drawn, so we're not making them. I'd be like, Whoa <laughs> I mean <laughs> don't be a dick. Presumably they'd be at least repaints or remolds of the mon- of the uh, the Terracons. Yeah, I would assume uh, remolds. Shark... The shark's easy enough. Yep. Blot, uh, then, I think you can work with fairly easily. This, who would Blot be? Uh, I think you could do him into the fat fish. The coelacanth? Oh, yeah. Um, the manta ray from the uh, cutthroat? Or a plane, maybe. Yeah. Um, maybe you could even do Blot from um, a tentacle into Blot. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just round and then stick um, shit on him. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're definitely going to have a few reuses. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'd be shocked if we didn't. Not... The lobster. I tell you, I tell you what would be neat mm. if they made the lobster from the uh, chromium mold. Mm. Just because it's it got that slender a... body. And you could you could have that be the target master one. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what that what happens with that because a lot of people wanted the Seacons because it's yes. isn't it the only mainstay combiner that wasn't done in the Power of the Primes com- I... Power combiner. Yeah, things. as far as I know, it's the last sort of big one. Yeah, because um, all the show ones are done. Mm-hmm. Most of the comic ones are done. Ah, but they were just repaints at that point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think Peranicon, God Neptune, all those guys, they're the only ones left. Yeah. Oh man, what if they didn't do God Neptune as a repaint, but they did like Energon, uh, Peranicon. Why? The, we- the weird neon <laughs> one. That, I would, I would like Why? that. I think that would be cool. The, the purple, brown, blue, and yellow one. Hey, live on the edge. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> uh, the other silhouette as well we got was, uh, Dejusta guessed upon as being Super Megatron. Yeah, that's weird. Hey, Andy, Violin Jagger Dark Nova types. You like yeah, that? Yeah, I do. Um, but <laughs> you know what I'm worried about, Mikey? Are you worried about the high quality? Uh, I'm worried about it because it's made from the Galvatron mold. To be fair, as long as that thing had a fully functional individual head, it might work better. I would imagine so. I mean, I have the third... Uh, well, I have the... Oh, is it third party? It's kind of third party, but kind of knock off version of uh, the one that mold. That's like it's not upscale. It's the the ones where they don't give you instructions. Yeah, it, and it came like, in a in a in a little plastic bag, big cannon. Yeah, like, I think it was parts, called. Parts of the upper torso are remo are, are new parts, but like the bottom parts are just like complete ripoffs. That's right, and they added yeah. in extra bits to it, and that was actually pretty good. It was pretty damn decent Galvatron toy. So. Mm. Depending what they do to this, I mean, I'm I'm not sure how they're gonna make it turn into a like helicopter jet thingy. What did Super Megatron turn into? I think it was a jet. Let's see. 
I'm pretty sure it was like a... Yeah, I mean, like, technically Galvatron has a jet mode. Oh, yeah, no, that's true, actually. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, he that. turned into, like, a hover jet and, like, a jet that was a gun. Yeah. Um, But, like, the... Oh, my God, the hover jet tank thing, it's just, like, it's not even feasible on any level. I am concerned with the size of his fusion cannon. It seems to be rather large, and I'm not sure if the arm it's... can support it. Okay, so, okay, it should be able to, as long as it's like, like, like the, okay, so I'm looking at it now. The Super Megatron, right? Mm -hmm. He turned into kind of like a flying gun. Yep. And Ultra Megatron turned into the weird tank thing. And he didn't have a fusion cannon. He had like a Macross missile cannon. Okay, so this is definitely Super uh, Super Megatron then. Yeah. Yeah. Fair play. But they've got really big animated Megatron ears. So I don't know if that'll translate in. What do you think of this, though, Mikey? What do you think uh, of Super Megatron? Because this will be the very first Super Megatron figure ever made. Yes, yes. Like, um, it's uh, like everyone else here has a representation already. It's really going to have to be one you see to the side. Yeah, agreed. I think it could translate well, but they need to fix the arm. Like, there are two big things that kill that Galvatron mold. Um, the way the arm cannon uh, blocks up the articulation. Yep. And the way the gimmick ruins the head. <laughs> Yeah. Because f- for some reason, they came up with the worst execution they could on that Galvatron head. Oh, yeah. It was, it was like, god-awful. Terrible. And, like, you could you could see, like, the meeting that led to that choice. But that does not me- mean you agree with that choice. No. There's only one reason you bought that toy. Yes. Well, what was that reason, Mikey? You didn't have another toy. <laughs> no. No, no. That wasn't the reason you bought it. There was one... I'm surprised he didn't jump on this. The I'm reason not... you bought that was for Mare Megatron. <laughs> well, Mare Megatron, like, he, I, I, you didn't buy this toy for Mare Megatron, Andy. You went to Japan and bought one where he was painted up and came with a little Sarah Scream, who was his bitch. That's what I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mare, Meg, Mare Megatron is a fine... And I, actually, I'm sad now. Why? You'll find out. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, so, <laughs> there you go, Mikey. Um... Mm. Interesting things potentially for the future. Um, I think the 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 problem that you mentioned with the arm uh, won't mm. be an issue here because it looks like the fusion cannon is on the side of his his arm, so mm. should be good there. Any other yeah. thoughts, Mikey? Or do you want to do you want to move us on? Let's move on. I'd say. All right, take us away, Mikey. So, um, the final three legend comics, or at least the last three we to catch up on, have been translated, Andy. Which Ooh. are the three that came with Roadfire, Diatlas, and Sonic Bomber. So these are a three-part finale to the story, which last time, of course, Megatron had been kidnapped by Dark Nova, who was a Vok, who was also after doing something with Violent Jiger, and now he's fused with Megatron into Star Giant. It's all very sensible. Hmm. Also, there's someone called Sonic. Who's Sonic? Who's this? He's a hedgehog. He goes fast. Yeah. He's in a band with his Son- uh, mother the and micromaster sister. daughter of Sonic Bomber. Ah, uh, I was wrong. She's a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a Japanese original toy. Yeah. yeah. Um. Right, and Speeder is Diatlas's son. Why does everyone have sons? I don't know. I know. So, anyway, the first one is Sonic Bomber, Bomber Chapter. So, the revived Star Giant is starting to eat Z Planet's Energon Z, and the Decepticons call out to Megatron, to, you know, Mayor Megatron, wear a tie, save us all! And, he, you know, he can't hear them, and the Autobots don't know what to do, because, like, they don't want to kill Megatron, because it's Mayor Megatron, and he's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, Sonic Bomber, however, ignores all this and goes on the offensive together with Moon Raider, um, as his top priority is protecting the planet and he doesn't really care um, because he helped make the planet and he's going to save the people and his daughter Sonic lives there um, so he rams into Star Giant's palm but the attack has no effect and he is crushed or seems no. to be and then the cities of the planet are vaporized with eye beams um, but uh, Sonic Bomber manages to survive by uh, um, when his transtector transformed into a zone mode so, revealing he has Zodiac power of his own. Andy. Mikey. <laughs> uh, next chapter is Road Fires. And this opens with a flashback to when the Zodiac, Zodiac spent its uh, all its power inducing the Big Bang. 
and turned into a super mineral that was spread across the newly created universe. One fragment ended up on Earth where it was detected by Professor Serikawa uh, and unearthed by the Atlas who kept it for the Autobots. So back in the present day, Zodiacs light up not only in the hands of Sonic Bomber, but all across the Z planet. And Diatlas reveals the Power Masters have been collecting all the fragments of the original, telling Star Giant that if he wills the power to destroy, then they will wield it to the create, because heroes. Um, while the Red Planet is being restored by the Zodiacs, Violent Jiger Trio, who are using the old Power Master bodies, um, remind them that they cannot wield the true power without their old powered engines, which is obviously something they have. Roadfire is aware as he vows to take the engines back from the stolen bodies. He combines with Topspin into wing-powered. And Diatlas is with Twin Twist to drill-powered. God <laughs> damn it. Um, new forms that both catch Violent Jiger by surprise and let them borrow the power of the Jump Starters' powered engines. Remember, technically the Jump Starters are kind of demigods in this. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. true. So, making short work of the people in the various bodies. Um, they then transform into their zone mode bases. Of course, because that's what the zone modes are, their bases. And absorb the Zodiac power from the air, infusing it into Roadfire's zone-powered hammer, which he uses to crush Igern, who is one of the Violent Jiger guys. Um, Roadfire retrieves his powered engine from Igern's remains, splattering himself in Energon, Blech. prompting Top Squid and Twin Twist to agree that while he's a nice guy, he's kind of weird. Um, and the last one is Diatlas's, and you're not ready for it. Oh. So, four million years ago, Megatron created Diatlas Sonic Bomber and Roadfire as the Powerdrons. Uh, or Powerdrons. <laughs> a right. Decepticon unit equipped with unique engines that let them travel across the universe and develop other planets into energy producing colony worlds. However, upon realizing Megatron was using energy to conquer and terrorize people, they abandoned the Decepticon cause and steal their fleet of starships to evacuate the civilians to Powerdron, um, a hidden world they secretly developed, which Ultra Magnus would later blow up. Um, because, my god, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Give me the bomb. Um, when they return to Cybertron and join the Autobots as the renamed Powered Masters, the Atlas tells Optimus of energy signs on the third planet in the Soul System, which is, of course, Earth, believing this energy could be used to destroy Decepticons. And it turns out Diaclus has a major anti-Decepticon bias going on. Um, so he announces during his fight with the last of the Violent Jiger guys that he's opposed to reviving the Legend World's Purely because Megatron was the one who shaped it into what it was. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Violent Jagger is pleased to hear that the Atlas embraces the Endless Conflict, confirming the views of Smokescreen and Dreadwind, Dreadwing as they watch from afar while Topspin and Twin Twist try to convince Roadfire that peace can be created in the Legends world. For God's sake, let's bring it back. Um, Roadfire silently leaves to join Sonic Bomber and Diatlas to form Big Powered. Uh, and... They end up battling uh, Violent Jiger, and even though Dry Atlas draws so much power from his partner's engines that it harms him, he pushes through and destroys his enemy. On the other side, Optimus tells Kane and Akira, who are, of course, the Transformers gay couple, of the Atlas's past as a Decepticon, and that his obsession with destroying evil is an atonement for his own sins. All very dramatic. Having recovered his powered engine, Diatlas sets his sights on destroying Megatron. And the Decepticons are naturally going, no, wait, no, what, no, no, no. Um, and Diatlas kicks the shit out of them. Topspin and Twin, Twin Twist then jump in to try and stop him. And they tell him that the Legends world proved that the Autobots and Decepticons can live together. Diatlas cuts their heads off and appropriates their Trantectors and glues them to himself. Jesus. <laughs> Hmm. Um, their powered engines being spared created for, for Diatlas to begin with. Um, he will. He is literally crying and screaming. I will never forget of Megatron. Um, he attacks Star Giant in spite of ev literally everyone going for fuck's sake. Stop. Um, then the uh, Roadfire and Sonic Bomber show up, and they all form with the Jump Starter bodies and form Ultra Powered. Um, only discovered that Star Giant has stopped moving. Knowing Diatlas needs to stay alive and revive the Legends world, Megatron is managing to hold him back. Diatlas is angered and saying, like, Megatron, fight me, fight me, fight me, fight me, fight me! Um, Megatron, however, saying he can't hold the Ark Nova for very long, you have to kill me. Okay. Uh, and he tells the story, which is from the Japanese G2 continuity, that he had a friend who was killed after they made peace. And Megatron ignored his wishes and started more war and became consumed with grief and rage. But being in charge of things, being Mayor Megatron in the Legends world, he finally made a place that his friend would have wanted to be. He finally became the best version of himself. 
and he begs Dead Atlas to work to rebuild it because of his god powers. And then Diatlas, who has decided he will honor Megatron's request, cuts Star Giant in half, killing Dark Nova and Mare Megatron. No! And at the end, he promises to rebuild the Legend World. Yeah, that's but it won't the, be as good, will it? That's the end. Mare Megatron's dead, Andy. Mm. There will be no more ties. Star, what if Starscream takes over? He doesn't even have a nice tie. That's the he's thing. Just, he's just got a creepy girlfriend. <laughs> Man, all right. Sad end. Bad end. Yeah, I'm actually kind of bummed. Yeah. In all honesty. <laughs> Can we not go back and choose a different outcome? <laughs> Mary Megatron's awesome. He's like the second best Megatron, and I only say that because I've never been able to like handle one physically. Mm. He might be the best Megatron. Moment I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah, a moment of silence for Mayor Megatron. Oh, bummer. Hmm. Anyway, Andy. Yes. Other news. Yeah, uh, let me take us on to uh, a little bit of kind of a bummer kind of news. It seems mm. that we, we were going to talk about it last week, but there'd only been one case of it, it seems. But now it seems like it's uh, becoming a bit more of an issue and that's the fact that uh, groins of MP Megatrons, Beast Wars Megatron, seem to be uh, breaking. Uh, Scrot Rot has crept into yet mm. another Masterpiece figure. Um, so unfortunately, if you get the Masterpiece Megatron, it is something that seemingly you have to be aware of. Mm. Um, as it's it's happened more than one, there seems to be multiple things to it. And if you've got a, if you bought it from a good company like you, you know you your big bad toy stores, your Kapows, this is fine. If you're buying it from somewhere like HLJ, obviously you're going to have a lot more issues returning and getting your money back and getting a new one from them. Yeah. Uh, that's just unfortunately the way of the beast. Mikey, what information do you have to tell us about uh, groin breakage cracking? Yeah, so there was one report before, but now we're getting a couple. Um, so basically, it was like a crack reported on the crotch, and it was like an isolated incident, whatever. However, now we have at least one more, maybe two or three, mm -hmm. um, minimum. Um, and th we've got multiple images. These cracks are all happening in the same place as well. They're yeah. on the side, of, the side with the screw holes, meaning that some cracks may have been formed from the screws being cranked too much in the factory. However, 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 which none of us realized, oh. it turns out the plastic being used, at least in this part of the toy, is swirly plastic. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. So, for anyone who doesn't know, swirly plastic is what made gold plastic syndrome a thing. People used to say it was the fact they used a gold dye and anything else. It wasn't. It was how things were mixed um, that created that swirling effect. It made the toys much more uh, breakable, especially in the long term. Yeah, put air bubbles so, in, in the plastic, yeah. like really small micro air bubbles. Yeah, so it, it was a time bomb going off. Um, some toys from that era didn't have it, like um, Beast War Megatron, uh, Beast War Galvatron Drill. Um, mm. and his feet and stuff, they, I had one for years, never even had a whiff of a problem. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, he was not a, a swirly plastic toy. However, yeah, uh, it turns out that the plastic used for the pelvis is the swirly type. Um... So, one person who had the broken crotch reported, I can regrettably confirm the breakage issue of this crotch I noticed this morning that a crack has formed. Due to reports of breakage, I was even holding my thumb against the crotch any time I moved the legs to provide counter pressure when I was messing with him. And given that I didn't notice that last night, uh, this last night, despite watching for it, I honestly wondering if the crack didn't form just standing on my table in robot mode overnight. Um, unlikely. Um, it probably, there was probably a micro fracture that you didn't see. And it just expanded. Um, I think the combination of the metallic swirl and the plastic and its relative thinness makes it far too fragile. And mm. I say this as somebody who is exceedingly careful with his toys. He's had an electro he's had a G2 Electro that survived for over 20 years. This man is a miracle worker. Which one's Electro? Is he the uh, one of the laser rods? Yeah, and he is just ooh. all gold. Oh yeah, ooh. I, I, um, yeah, I had a feeling it was him. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately we not only have a return of GPS um, which like I have to plastic with thicker you may not have had that problem mm. um because it's not being reported in any other part of the toy but we have it in a masterpiece figure and 
the second most expensive masterpiece figure. See, I, I wouldn't even say it matters oh. that it's it just happens on the thin part because it means mm. that over time, Megatron's mm. just going to die anyway. Yeah. Um, and it'll start affecting the rest of the figure, one would assume. I really... Especially for a figure that's been so hyped. And is so expensive. And you told mm. me that you thought it was too expensive for what it was after seeing reviews yeah. for it. I think it looks very nice, but I do not think it is worth the money. Like, having seen it, I if you have that kind of money, I would buy Dinobot and have a little bit left over. He mm. looks like he's worth the money, and any problems with him are something that's very easy to manage. Megatron does have a voice box, though, with some pretty cool sounds on him. Which I didn't realize that Megatron's voice actor was the guy who did Kuro Ryuji's sound effects. Oh, is it him, is it? I thought I yeah. recognized him. <laughs> and he was also plays on um, Kyoru, Kuro, uh, the first Kyoru Violet. Oh, really? Remember the okay. old man? Remember the crazy yeah, old yeah. man? That, that was Megatron. Huh. Because I was listening, I was just like, you sound very familiar. Why do you sound so familiar? <laughs> and I looked it up, just like, holy crap. Um... Disappointing news, I'd say. Yeah. Mm. Um, Very, very disappointing. disappointing. Uh, kind of... It's difficult to justify this one. It's, wait, I think it's the price point that really mm. makes it hard to justify, right? Because it's like you're spending yeah. all this money that there shouldn't be an issue like this that's mm. uh, that, that you would have thought has been cured and exercised from uh, toy collecting. Mm. Um... Like, QC issues on expensive toys are a thing. They sure. Be, they frequently tend to be a bit more delicate than, you know, normal toys. But this kind of problem, this is a manufacturing issue that should not have occurred, in my opinion. Agreed. Um, so it's disappointing. Um, if I was a big masterpiece collector, I would definitely be very cautious moving forward. Mm. For at least until... Like, if they... Hopefully this is a once-off thing, and if they do another run of them, this will be fixed. Um, they've done another run of every other masterpiece figure, so I'm sure they they're they're looking at like uh, QC reports. Yeah. Um, and if the next run of them and the reports are this thing is built like a brick, like this man's crotch is as tough as nails, like that's great, but disappointing. Very. Yeah. Um, not not good stuff. Bad times. Yeah. Bad times, times indeed. Um, but yes, if you have him, uh, keep an eye out. Um, or maybe if you're thinking about getting him, maybe hold off a bit. Yeah. Uh, honestly, if you were thinking about getting him, I would say hold off until the next run. Yeah. Which is almost certainly going to happen. And even if it doesn't, I think that's a lot. Because like Andy said, depending on who you buy from, like if you buy from Amazon Japan, I don't know how hard or easy it is to get a refund or a replacement figure. I imagine it's just a faff, isn't it? Because yeah. you're going to have HL... to post it back, and then you're going to yeah. have to wait for it to go all the way back to HLJ. I know it's yeah. you. It, it'd be too much of a, a faff for Mandarake, because I remember when oh. I got my Octane, and he had the massively cracked shoulder on the oh. uh, Titan Master. Like, the only real thing that they could do uh, that wasn't going to cost me more money was just give me a slight refund. Not a full yeah. refund, just a slight refund. Yeah, I held HLJ, from my experience, can be quite bad in that regard. Mm. Um, they, like, I remember if it's not a major issue, sometimes they'll go like, well, I give you a partial refund. As I'd argue this is a major one, at least. Yeah, I would say this is big. But, like, I remember there were some problems with that, um, when they were doing the returns for the R.A.D. Optimus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought they didn't, I didn't really go into too much at the time, I think, but I don't think they handled that very well. Right. Um, because there was a lot of, like, oh, we'll do partial refunds. It's just like, this is... I mean, for me, it wouldn't be an issue, but it is a fundamental construction issue in the toy. Yeah. With the sound yeah. effect box. And, like, if you're paying for a product and that product's not there, you you better give me my money back. Yeah, or... exactly. And in this case, like, what I'd say is, like, listen, this toy is like this. Do you have a replacement? Except a replacement's just going to do the same thing, or at least there's a decent chance it will. Mm -hmm. um, the fact, like, just going through the pictures, this is all happening in exactly the same spot, like... It, it's like the pressure from the screw um, cracks it, but then like accompanying cracks occur across the entire joint. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Disappointing. Bad, very bad stuff. Very di mm. very disappointing. Mm. Uh, Mikey, do you want to take us on to the very last bit of news then, Saw? So... Yeah. Um, I was going to do throw in a Lorenzo quote here, but he's depressing. <laughs> um, although it's why not? You, you love your Lorenzo. 
He's a terrible person. <laughs> uh, but it's also like people got pissed over this one. Best boy. They were screaming at it like they were. There was I uh, like threads got locked. Angrily well, for, locked from L- Lorenzo. Why? Um, <laughs> just because it turned into like I want to reboot. I don't want to reboot. I want to reboot. I don't want to reboot. Um, basically, he said like they won't be getting Michael Bay back. But the best, the, the bit that just in- unintentionally felt funny. Are you developing a script that picks up where the last night left off? No. Nothing else. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just no. <laughs> Which I think is interesting because I think that's the first time he's given a definitive answer to literally any question. Like, he's not re- leaving himself wiggle room with that. Yeah. Mm. That's um, the that's there, Lorenzo way. Yeah. Also, there was a, another one of those Japanese Bubblebee anime clips where, for some bizarre reason, Charlie appears to be voiced by a man. Oh, all right. Which is weird. And it's okay. Bumblebee wandering around, like, places and being weird. But it's it's just like when Charlie talks and he's just like, yes, Bumblebee. And it's just like, <laughs> That's weird. You're not Haley Steinfeld. <laughs> um, but yeah, the last bit of official news was TFCon Toronto, running July 12th to 14th, has announced that Jack Lawrence, comic book artist for Transformers Lost Light, uh, worked on IDW's Sonic the Hedgehog. He will be at TFCon Canada. Um, so he'll be there all weekend offering prints and commissions, and we'll probably be doing a panel or three. He's being presented by the Chosen Prime. Um, so this is, of course, going to be held at that bloody Hilton in Meadowvale. Oh, Meadowvale. That's, that's an alternate name. I'm going to call it that from now on. The Hilton Meadowvale in Ontario. Um, so, uh, booking is open online and the hotel block block booking is also there. July 12th to 14th. Hmm. Cool. Jack's cool. His arms are huge. Yay. So, there you go. Um... Anything else you wanted? You, I mean, are you going to Toronto to see to see Jack Andy? Uh, not that I know of, unless someone's going to ship me out there Maybe in a box. To ship. Yeah, why don't they do that? Chris? Yeah, <laughs> real <laughs> friends would. Yeah, um, that's all mine is. Ah, uh, cool. And I think that is it. That's all of hmm. the news and little pretty Mikey for this week. So uh, as usual, I'm gonna put a you know gun up and ask you what you've been up to this week. Done some fun um, the- stuff. Some, um, the an- a bit more actually this week. The anime catch up is still be in the works, unfortunately. From um, the previous season or from this new season? See, uh, like new season is just starting, and I don't oh. know where to start with it. Okay. Um, but <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just like we're getting there in terms of the self organization, but still a bit up in the air. I did not manage to watch Turn A Gundam with the with the cow. <laughs> oh yes, I forgot about that. <laughs> or for Metal Panic, but I will definitely try to get to them in the next week. I want it. what's with the cow, Andy? I don't, I don't know. care about the rest of the show. I want to know about the cow. I wish I could um, tell you. Yeah, but, uh, does he shoot the cow at people? I hope That's all so. I want to know. Um but yeah, I did get to watch a few things. Um so largely Toku actually this week. Um so, first of all, there was uh, Rise of the Shield Hero, which has a new opening that I don't like as much. Agreed. And it's not got as good of an end as well, end sequence. No. Um, yeah, no. I'll be... Uh, no. Um, but it's mostly about the second princess, Melty, and her being very scared of her sister, who... How has no one else realized she's evil? I don't... I don't know. <laughs> she has... She she is literally carrying around big signs saying, gonna fuck you up. Yeah. Um, she's not what we'd call subtle about it. One no, thing. and she's just like, well, I mean, she's brainwashed. Have to murder her. That's why it makes the rest <laughs> of the heroes really irritating. But they don't say it. it's like, oh, come on, <laughs> really? She's li- she started off by saying, I don't want to kill my sister. Well, I gotta kill her. Yep. Ah, she's brain controlled. Kill her. Uh, like I love that they like because the this show thinks so it has the logic of if I had that kind of power, do you really think I was put up with all of your bullshit? Hmm. Like, do you really think I'd be... Th- no, I have brainwashing power, and I let you people do this to me constantly. Yep. Yeah, that's what's going on here. Um, but, yeah. Um, giant chicken. Does what giant, giant chicken does. Chicken. <laughs> um, cre- Although, slightly creepy bit with giant chicken, where Spear Guy put- stops her changing, and it's just like, yeah. you're going to be a little girl angel forever. Yeah. And then starts hugging her inappropriately, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I wish he'd stop that. That's weird. <laughs> Uh, I did. I, what, what also, is, I did, also I, giant chicken is best when she's not a little girl. When she is giant chicken, she is best. Yes, and she knows it. 
Yep. She loves her car. Um, but I did do a little reading round afterwards. I was just mm. curious, like, how did that play out in other things? And it turns out that that played out in the novel with him basically saying he was going to have sex with her. No! Why? Because in the novel, they play up, apparently, in the novel, they play up his tendency to want to bang anything that moves a lot more. Oh, no. So, yes, he he was going like, I like me little angel girls. And it's like, you know what? Kick him. Kick him I'm, again. I'm, I'm I'm fairly glad then that they don't include this in the anime. <laughs> yes, me too. Me yeah. too. Um, but no, it was good. Like new ca- new major character being built up. Um, Melty. Melty. She, she is... has a silly name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she does. <laughs> ah, Grand Queen Melty. Um, <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and, and I, I li- it's nice to see something I liked is that they're still pulling up the fact that she's she kind of just wants her dad to get on with people. <laughs> Stop cause, being cause, such a shithead dad. <laughs> because she thinks if not, her mother's going to be disappointed in her. Yeah. She, and also her mother's the most powerful person in the country, so it's like, <laughs> eh. Um But no, it was good. Like, still enjoying that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good yeah, show. very much. I would agree. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? Uh, Zio or Geo episode 29, I want to say, which was the Blade one. I watched that subbed. Um... Yeah, that's got quite a lot of Blade references. Good ones. Um, yeah, another Blade. Um, why another Blade is the way they are. I don't want... Because another Blade is a spoiler character, by the way. A big one. And it's kind of, it, like, really plays into a lot of the Blade fiction. Um, the bits with Hajime and Kenzaki are good. Also, the suit, act- the suit actor for Blade is named Hajime Kenzaki. That's weird. Hmm. I, that's just weird. I'm sorry. It's just weird. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, there's a decent fight at the end. Geo stuff was more low key in this. Uh, it's basically uh, gate. You find out Gates and Waz's uh, history. What's actually gone on there, which raises more question about what the hell Waz is now. Hmm. Uh, because it seems in the past he was relatively normal, and now he bleeds paper. <laughs> Um, and also, like, White Waz is reaching, like, breaking point. He's just like, nope, fuck y'all up. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see what happens there. Next episode is bringing in Trinity, and I'm at least curious to see how they execute it, even if I don't like the design. Because that design's a bit, like, it's basically Deno Climax form, except not as good. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, so, decent episode. Uh... Blade stuff, they didn't fuck it up so far. Keep an eye on it. Oh, that's they good. Could, they could still fuck it up. Yeah, yeah. That I I don't know. Um, but we'll 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 keep going there. Uh Real Soldier episode three, which introduced uh green and black. Um, this show is definitely leaning into the dark a bit. Like more so than most Sentai's do at this stage. Cause it's they reveal that there are two ways to kill the monsters. Right? Mm-hmm. You destroy the monster, whether it's when it's big or when it's small or whatever. Or you kill the person it was spawned from. And it's pretty heavily implied that Green and Black have been... That is how they've been dealing with these things. By murdering people. Yay! And saying it's mercy (laughs) killing. Um, Yeah, also the kind of annoying comedy friend, our comedy girl in this. um, She is again putting surprisingly dark scenario. Hey, Japan and your disturbing history of suicide... Why? Why are we doing this at, at at in episode three? We're not even building up to this. You're you're just doing suicide stuff. Hey, um, but yeah, still good. Like the mech fight scenes in this are so different. I'm really enjoying them. Um, they're 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 very they want to they're like taking Ultraman stuff and combining it with Sentai. It's not just a straight translation. Mm-hmm. Um, still not a lot of character work going on. Um, a little bit for Blue because he's like, oh these giant dinosaur robots well they're made to work for us and then his one takes real insult at that and won't talk to him like t- literally turns his back in him and just sort of goes into a corner and just looks at it back occasionally like fuck you <laughs> which when it's a triceratops with a sword for a face it's kind of weird <laughs> um but um yeah and red is just kind of enthusiastic he's not annoying enthusiastic but he's just in your face a bit and pink is just the strong girl so okay. I'm I'm hoping they do a bit more with it soon. Um, uh, 
the other thing which I watched today was Rider Time Ryuki. Oh, right. That, that's the, the Ryuki special, right? Yeah. So apparently, um, uh, Shinji's actor was very like, I would love to come back and do Rider again because cool. he really enjoyed it. Mm. And so what they've done is they've gotten about five or six of the actors back. Um, apparently, they're trying to get Femme, but she got pregnant and had a baby and... It like she she just tweeted herself with a little, little tiny child and it's like you think I'm <laughs> filming now? Yes. Uh, get, get out of that hospital bed and you get out there and start filming. It's, we're gonna actually we're gonna put you in the suit. You'll be doing the stunts yourself. You like, strap the baby to your arm. It's fine. We'll work yep. it into the show somehow. Um, but fair play to her having children. It's a good thing. Um, at least I'm told it is. Like also, <laughs> you'll never sleep again. <laughs> but, thumbs up. Um, but d- 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 yeah, so it's it's one. Th- so you, this is a bit different. It's like it's a battle royale. It's the characters post the Geo episode. Hang on, how's this different from the previous uh, Ryuki stuff? So the previous Ryuki stuff was like it's all really the other battle royale. No, no, it was like all the other writer stuff that's been going on. They don't have their memories. Um, they're vaguely interrupted. The difference was that Ryuga being Ryuga, he sort of breaks the rules a bit, so he mm. remembers everything that happened. This is because slight spoilers because of another Ryuki who's shown up now, because it was Ryuga in the Ryuki episodes. Um, someone has started up, has used the powers of the mirror world to transport several of the original writers and several new writers into the mirror world. Uh, they have a week to have a battle royale fight, and at the end, the winner will one. They've all had their memories wiped, so they remember each other's names. <laughs> they, they remember their own names, and if they if they're one of the original writers, they remember someone else's name. Okay, but they don't remember anything else, and their personalities are a bit different. Um, and the new writers, obviously, they don't have a clue who anyone is, um, and they have their powers back because it's be- seemingly because of the rules of the mirror world, right? Sure. So. The guy who at the end of the Ryuki episode of Gio was just like, I'm going to live my life well, then got sucked into a mirror of dimension and got got his memory wiped and got told by someone he never met before that you have to fight and kill these guys. Oh, no. <laughs> so, that's less happy. Um, Gio and Gates do show up in it, but very, very briefly. Um, and yeah, so it's a battle fight, and we it, you've got a week, and it starts four days in. Um... There are no punches pulled in this one. Hmm. Uh, Oja is the only one who remembers everything. <laughs> all the way, oh, no. <laughs> all, all the way back to the original Ryuki show. So not even the timeline resetting re- erased his memories. No, oh, jeez. Presumably just because he's been reset so many times at this stage. Like, he just like, huh, rewrite time, fuck you. So if he wasn't a psychopath before, I mean, this would just really push him over the edge. Yeah, like, everyone else is just going like, oh, I remember your name. And he's just like, buddy, I want to kill you. Because <laughs> he, for him, he, he really wants to fight the people he knew. Yeah. Uh, he's enjoying that part of it. So, and he, is, like, he is really playing into the whole thing. Goro's there, and his stuff is kind of weird. <laughs> um, because he's basically taken a lot of his loyalty for, what was his name, Kita something? I can't remember. It's been yeah. so long since I watched it. But he's tra- because he's only got the memories of the loyalty. He's transferred it to Oja of all people. Oh no! <laughs> but it's yeah. But it's all like very battle royale. Like alliances are being formed, but everyone is very aware of the fact they have to kill each other in a couple of days. Yeah. And people die. Um. Someone is eaten. Hey, that's um, a good old thing. It's been a yeah. while. Yeah. Um. There's violence. There is. Not, like the first episode is relatively low on the violence, mm. and then episode two shows up, and it's just like that is incredibly bloody and violent. How many episodes are there meant to be then? Uh, three. So three. Okay. Yeah. So so kind of like, like the um the X eight uh, special. Yeah. 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 Um, but again, like the X eight one, it's just like I could show. We could just stab this guy and have a knife sticking out of his chest. We could do that. Yeah. Also, and I have to say this because I genuinely never expected to see this in something in Common Rider that didn't have like a try-hard element like Amazon's. Mm. Um, also, this is being written by Inoue, which might explain some of this. Um, he came back; he's alive still, and <laughs> um, so I, I like again. This is slight spoiler, but it, I think it is worth mentioning. So you and I love Bravo, right? Yes. He's, he is a wonderful character. He's gay as Christmas. Yes. 
the most stereotype Japanese gay character who's ever lived. Which one was Bravo? Bravo and A. What? How are you? Oh, Can't... from uh, from Guy. Yes. Okay. God yeah. damn it! You, I you thought, got I it the first time. Talking from like... Ryuki. No, so we we love Bravo because he's great. Uh, he he just wants his melon man, right? Um, and then do you remember Double had the villain in the movie? Um, who had the stretchy arms? Yes. And he was very like stereotypical. Look, it's a gay character, but we'll never say it. That's right. Um, Ryuki has taken a different angle. Ryuki has two characters. They are returning actors. Um, they are two of the old writers. And they, after kind of sort of cannibalizing someone, kind of, um, go into a room. They get fully naked, get into a bed together, and start kissing. And then the camera pans away. Mm-hmm. So we have our first... Like, it's the second, it's the, okay, so Takatora, I think, had the first implied sex scene. And then Amazon's had the sex scene, but that's Amazon, so who gives a fuck? Um, And this is the first time in sort of main writer, it's just like, there is no implication. They had sex. And it is also a first completely unambiguously gay sex scene in Common Writer. And apparently a lot of Japanese people are complaining that their children saw this because they didn't know where this was going. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um I think that's worth noting. I think I did not expect that that at all. I did not expect Ryuki to include like a definite like and there's a box ticked. Mm-hmm. Like I know I've been thinking about how Ryder does adult shows when it comes back for stuff, like when it brings back characters, whatever, or when it does stuff like uh Amazons or Shin back in the nineties or something. And yeah, this is an interest. This is probably, I'm not say it's pretty well done. I would say it's pretty maturely done. Like it is done with like, it's not camp in the least. It's just two normal guys, one of which is in the, at least broken, um, who end up in bed together. It's mm. just like okay, cool. And it's a battle royale thing, which means it's just like I've seen battle royale and I know how this kind of stuff ends. <laughs> um, yeah. So Ryuki, I would say if you're into Ryuki, check it out. I'm going to wait until the last episode comes out then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're only 20 minutes, so there's no point. Um, How long? Uh, when, when does the last episode come week. out? Do you know? Oh, next well, week. okay. It's like one a week. Um, I would when also say like... during the week? If you were aware of, uh, in a way, tropes, you can see them. When about during the week, is it? I think it'll be out next Saturday. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Uh, I will say some of the fight scenes, they're not particularly good, but there's some very good camera work. Mm, interesting. Um, Mm. Um, also, like, uh, Abyss is in instead of Femme. Ah, uh, yeah, little shark boy. Mm. Uh, no sign of Odin yet. Hmm, suspicious. Probably uh, for the best since he was slightly overpowered, shall we say, <laughs> compared to everybody else. Yeah, o- like, Odin Odin was like a, a mid to late game, mo- like, Neo Heisei boss. Yeah. Uh, in in like early Heisei where that didn't happen much, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But af- apart from that, um, I did see a superhero movie this week. Oh, you saw Shazam! Um, I saw Shazam! I saw Shazam! Uh. <laughs> um, it was that or Captain Marvel, and I flipped a coin. Basically, they were both okay. on at the same time. I'll probably see Marvel uh, during the week. Um, so I know very little about the Shazam mythos beyond what I picked up occasionally. Um, I have a fairly large case of superhero fatigue these days. Mm -hmm. I am also pretty disappointed in almost all the DC movies, bar Aquaman, which is fun in a dumb as a sack of hammers kind of way. (laughs) Um, but it's fun dumb, you know? Yeah. So I went into Shazam with low, low expectations. Um, that was a genuinely great movie. Oh, good. Um, it's not an action movie, and I saw the Angry Joe review, and a lot of the talk was the action. The action is poor, and the action is infrequent. It is not an action movie. Were you and Joe side during that review? Because, you know, I, well, I not never... To the, no, Joe was like, oh no, the action was here, here, here. My thing was like, the action isn't there, but that's not the point. Mm-hmm. This is not, this is a different genre of movie. Because I, I tend not to trust Joe when he really likes something because he's very dismissive oh, he... of uh, everything. Yeah, yeah. I think he he went overboard, but I like 
I think they had a point like it's the action is not it is not much of it and it's not particularly well done mm-hmm. but it's not on any level an action film it's a comedy it's a family comedy yeah um with some drama in the superhero genre which I think is great because I think if you're going to keep superheroes fresh you need to start bringing in other stuff like there's that movie Brightburn which is doing horror um there's an X-Men movie doing horror doing just a comedy flick about a superhero I think was a genius move hmm. um like the basic thing if you don't know Shazam boy he's brought him to a foster home he's looking for his mother he's kind of aggressive towards everyone and is he's just he puts up walls and then he's chosen by a wizard to have the power of Shazam and it kind of brings out the best version of himself like he before being Shazam he's kind of a shithead and then just as Shazam the character like he does a complete 180 because he's just like holy crap what is my life now um (laughs) Like it's, but it's like read, and then they call that out. It's like I like you. Like someone says, I like you better like this. It's like, yeah, I wasn't. I'm not a dick like this, am I? No. Huh. Well, it's fun. Um, I laughed a lot, Andy. I laughed a lot. Mm. Um, and it doesn't have any major tonal issues. Like it's funny, and it has serious bits, and they are dealing with issues, and it doesn't undermine them constantly with jokes. There's no bathos. There is no bathos. There is just comedy and pathos. That's and almost unbelievable do... in this day and age. Yeah. Like, there's a few jokes that don't land. Like, there's mm. one with the villain and he's shouting, and I'm just like, it's not that funny. <laughs> and it's going on a little bit too long. But I laughed out loud a lot. I'm wondering if this is what everyone else felt when they saw Thor Ragnarok. Because mm. you know I don't like that movie. Yeah. And I was in a cinema of quiet people in that movie. And then everyone tells me it's funny. And then I'm in Shazam and like the entire place is just like, oh my God. Um, Characters are all good. Character acting, very good. Everyone's engaging. There is like the villain is the weakest one in this. He's kind of interesting to start off with, but then he becomes pretty two dimensional. Um, But there's some stuff in here I would not show children as well. Right. I'm honest. Um, Or at least not a young child. Um, Just one or two scenes. Um, a couple of the villains that are in this, they're very, they're actually like, feel like they've been designed by a horror designer. Yeah. And, and then it turned out the director did several horror movies beforehand and it all makes sense to me now. Um, but no, seriously, I would say check this one out, whether it's at home in the cinema, I saw it on the cheap, um, just because it was a five euro showing and I was just like, cool. Um, (laughs) absolutely worth your time in my opinion. Also the most comic book movie DC has done. Hey, that's good. Like, it includes stuff that I can genuinely say I'd never, ever, ever imagined they they put in. Yeah. Um, the end credit scene introduces someone that we're just like, I'm sorry, what? You're oh, here. yeah, I, I know I know what you're talking about, yeah. It, you wouldn't have called it. No, no, I wouldn't. But to be um, fair, I, I don't know him that well. No, me neither, but I still would not have called it. <laughs> Um, but there's also something in the end fight scene that they do. And I'm just like, could not believe you did it. Cause I actually, when they were doing it, I was just like, you're not in the cinema out loud. And like, I would, I looked around to see if anyone was just like, shut up. And everyone was just, there were like several people just like, no, they're not going to do that. And then just <laughs> did it. I was just like, really worth your time in my opinion. Um, people have said like, it would not be the same movie without the actor playing Shazam. Okay. And I've got to agree with that. He does an excellent job. Like, it is not easy to convincingly play a teenager in an adult body. Mm. I think he pulls it off very, very well. There's a few things that are a bit over the top, like the bullies who hit a, hit a crippled child, or disabled child, right? Oh, God. Jesus. A disabled child with a car and then start beating him. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and it, <laughs> Jesus. Like, it's a bit much. Like Also, like I like that Billy is... It plays into Billy's like being a dick a bit, and mm-hmm. I think it works because I like Billy as a dick. Um, because it makes him more enjoyable. Um, there are references to the wider DC extended universe. They are handled very, very well. Um, massive spoilers, most of them, so I can't really mention them. But they're not; they don't interfere with the plot. There's no, there's no setup for like, and oh, next movie, next movie, we're going to have Bat, Bat, Super Batman in it. Mm-hmm. Um, cannot. Did you say Bat, this... Super Batman? Bat, Super Batman. Like it's a very, very solid eight <laughs> or a nine. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, so, hey, Andy, I'm enthusiastic about a superhero movie again. Hmm, you enthusiastic about the Joker trailer? Um, it looks interesting. I don't know if I'd say enthusiastic. I'm, I'm um, fairly enthusiastic because it looks fucking different. It doesn't look it, like a standard superhero movie, so that's the no, most the... excited I could ever have been for a <laughs> movie at this point. Hey, Andy, what about if they did Spider-Verse 2 trailer? 
but they're not. <laughs> but they might. But the, but they're not doing it yet. <laughs> like I also like any caveat I say about superhero fatigue. That's not include Spider Verse. Uh, no, 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 because no. that was that was good. Um, I had a friend, and they said like Joker movie. Yeah. So Heat Ledger prequel, and I'm just like, oh my god, what if what? they did? No. <laughs> like that. That's why it's a different. That's why they're saying they can still have what's his face, Jared Leto or whatever it was, play him in the Suicide Squad <sighs> stuff. Um, no. it's just like because it's actually Heat Ledger's Joker. No. Ah! No. <laughs> if you well, if the end of the movie ended, just like, do you want to know how I got this scar? <laughs> it's just like, shut up, Yorkin Phoenix. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, that's my week, really. Uh, oh. So, what about you, Andy? Uh, not a super exciting week. Uh, I did a recording for the Patreon show for uh, Moonbase Woo Woo, uh, so Ooh. I've got that to edit. It Anything will be. It's a general talk about the Star Trek movies uh, with two special guests. Is They're... one of them J.K. by any chance? J.K. Simmons? No, I wish. No. That would be really but... impressive if we got yeah. J.K. Simmons to come AJK, on and talk about it. Because... <laughs> A.J.K. Who's a... Initials are J.K. I don't, want to... I, don't... I don't know if it's a spoiler to say who I think it is. It is. I mean, uh, Jason's on. Yo, get... there we go. There yeah. we go, Andy. <laughs> Also, Jason, he's saying you're not as cool as J.K. Simmons. Well done. I mean, he's he's not. That's that's not <laughs> that's not an unfair thing. That's not. He was he was um he was J. Jonah Jameson. Like no, I don't know anyone who's cooler than J.K. Simmons. <laughs> just like, well, he's not. He's not. <laughs> that's like saying, oh, Andy, you're not as cool as Avram Brooks. I'm like, yeah, no fucking shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Jesus. Well fucking done. Oh, oh my god. Dude. You're going to have to send that to me, by the way. Uh, what's that? The show. I, I wanted to oh. that one. Yeah, we, we unfortunately didn't get to talk about the last two because um, uh, we had to wrap up very quickly because, unsurprisingly, talking about 13 Star Trek movies takes a <laughs> while. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, you really will, want to talk about Into Darkness? The, I will be talking because we didn't have time. I'm going to uh, record a bit of me talking about them because it will be quick and be very negative. <laughs> Just like, I haven't seen Beyond. So I have no idea. Um, yeah, yeah. Into darkness, yeah. my contribution. Don't. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was interesting because uh, Jason uh, and mm. and uh, Jeremy uh, Jeremy from um, Transmissions had some uh, some interesting thoughts on those movies. Mm. One particular one I didn't see coming. The, oh no, they don't like Insurrection, do they? Oh no, no one likes insurrection. <laughs> I was going to say, like, do we... they were just like, I'm really into the whole, you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but... yeah, yeah. Oh god, yeah. they don't like Nemesis, do they? You'll have to wait and find out, Mister Mike. I hear one of them say, like, I'm really into the bald Picard clone and Ron, <laughs> Ron Perlman and Psychic Rape. I'm just going to like, guys, we need to talk. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you to stop listening to my yeah, show. You're just going to, oh Jesus, he... Nemesis gonna have... is a Oh, it's a movie. Insurrection had the moment where someone asked if their boobs were getting tighter. That's my takeaway from it. Oh, didn't Riker say that to Deanna or something? No, no. Um, did they say uh, dwarf? Because that would have been no, no, great. No. <laughs> no, what was her name? Um, Crusher. Oh my god. Yes, thank you. Doctor okay. Crusher said it to Deanna. Do you feel like your boobs are getting taller or uh, t- tighter what or whatever? And it's like, why are we having this conversation? I, I wish I was in the cinema and at the time when you saw this movie and you stand up and say, kill me! <laughs> kill me! <laughs> Grab the person next to me and just start screaming at them. <laughs> I want to die! <laughs> Uh, so that was one thing I did this week. Um, I also, because we talked about the Star Trek movies, decided to mm. go back and watch uh, my personal favourite one, which is The Undiscovered Country. Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered mm. Country. Uh, and so I rewatched that again, and again, really enjoyed it. It's it's a really good, solid Star Trek film, and it is very Star Trek. Uh, like it's not like super heavy on the action. It's got your very Shakespearean villain uh, with uh, Commander Kang, I think something like that. I think it's Kang. Um, I, yeah, I, I I once more, it's like yo, this is this is this is some good shit right here. <laughs> There's some good shit. Uh, some mm. good Star Trekkins. Uh, have I done much else? I saw my buddy Matt. That was something fun I did. Uh, so I had Piha and all that jazz. And he told me about some wrestling stuff. And I went, that's cool. And we got to play a game of Night Vault, which is my Warhammer game. Uh, so that was a process of learning how to play that. <laughs> uh, so that that was good. That was fun. Um, 
Anything else? Oh, oh, today, um, j- literally just before we started recording, I went, did I put out last month's uh, From the Files of Teletron 2? And I went, no, I didn't. Not not the free version anyway. <laughs> but that's, to be fair, in my defense, that's because we ha- we recorded that, uh, the Patreon show, quite late. That's just not because of, No, that just because of how the comics came out. So mm. I, I can't remember when I put that one out because there's always a week between them. So I don't know if I'm still in or if I've just gone over. I might have just gone over, but I just went, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so for the most part, I've got that sorted out. So I should be able to upload that mm. to, tonight or tomorrow or something like that. Maybe, maybe not tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be a, another busy day. Uh, and then it was just uh, uh, lots of work, unfortunately. So that was my way. Oh, 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 Mikey. Oh, oh, yes. I got, I got my burb. Burb. My burb. My You'll my right big back. my big knockoff burb. Burb. Uh, oh, bur- oh, that burb. Yeah, it's a burb uh, because it's not a real bird. A bird isn't a knockoff. A uh, knockoff version of a bird is a burb. That's my logic. Mm. So I got the... What's it called? What's it called? I've got the box here because I'm cleaned up because I'm a dirty cock. Uh, I have a War Eagle, which is a dive bomb from the uh, Sky Sora combination mode, uh, mm. which is... Where's the company name? Uh, M Wizard, I think is the company name. Uh, which is like a, a way it's either Wei Zhang or affiliate of Wei Zhang or a, it is just Wei Zhang. Uh, it's their version of the Predacons, uh, the power of the prime one. So I, I got him. Uh, I wanted to get one just to see if they were any good. He was nine pounds, including postage. So I was like, well, that's not much of a, a Michael Gambon. Uh, mm. And I th- he's good. He's not bad. He does have some problems, like the fact that um, most of the uh what's it called the mold the the places where the uh, the pieces of plastic were attached to the sprue they weren't cut off very well so the there are some uh noticeable divots where the plastic's been gouged out mm. you know when you were cutting your uh, bits of models off the sprue mikey yes uh it's just where those bits are but it's more like a, a gouge in so it's not been neatly cut um mm. which is a bit of a shame it's not a massive deal but it's just like ah oh, well that's a that's that's what you do when you get knockoff stuff. Um, there was extra uh, flash from the mold, so I had to go around with a knife and just tidy it up here and there in places. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, I'm I'm very I'm very happy. He's not as tight as I'd maybe like him to be. There certainly uh, on the wing joints, I'd like those bits to be a bit tighter. But the wings have been redesigned, so he's actually got the feathers. Uh, he's been uh, redesigned color scheme wise from what I'm aware he's got new guns which look more like giant blunderbusters which are kind of fun mm-hmm. um, I'm not sure how much other things are different on him because uh, obviously I don't have the original version because I wasn't willing to pay that kind of price for it but he does have a, I know the hand is completely new uh, and the hand has uh, ball joints all in the the knuckles and one two extra joints in the fingers so you you know you can flip the bird properly the thumb has a really good uh, joint in it uh, the wrist also has a joint so you can flip it upwards so you can give him the hand like a uh, talk to the hand kind of thing yeah yeah uh, so it's good I mean the hands are visually a bit better in the uh, third party set that you can get for these guys you know the upgrade set. But that's probably an extra 30 quid on top of whatever you paid for that set. So, mm-hmm. so far, I, I am, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I'm having quite a lot of fun. Is the bird mode a bit stupid? Y- yes, <laughs> it is. There is 1,000% mm-hmm. no doubt about that. But I kind of like how stupid it is. Uh, it does have that G1 kind of love of who gives a shit <laughs> if you know what i mean it's like ah uh, who cares you know we can't really make a bird out of a combiner limb so we're gonna just try our best uh and that's kind of what i like about it granted i do have a bit of an issue with the fact that his head uh is vi- very visible in his mouth so you know if you have the mouth open at all you can just see his little face kind of poking through Going, yeah. yeah i mean there's there's nothing you can do about that that's that's a hasbro design yeah um there's nothing you can do there uh, so when this week got a little bit uh, rough, I decided to buy the other two that are out, which are, uh, I can't remember their ver- their name for it, but the, the Rampage, the kitty, and yeah. Iron Bull, their version of um, 
Ooh. Iron Brew. Iron, 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 Iron Rhino, sorry, not Iron, oh. Iron Bull, Iron Rhino, which is their version of... Um, Headstrong? Headstrong, thank you. I was thinking, is it Tantrum? It's like, no, Tan- that's Tantrum the bull. bull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and apparently, uh, from what I've seen online, what I've looked at, Tantrum's the best, uh, sorry, Headstrong's the best one. Like, he's hmm. really tight, apparently. Uh, and he also comes with an extra replacement uh, joint gear system because some people's dive bombs for when he goes into arm mode, mm. uh, the the joint, uh, the ratchet joint was pretty weak. Mine's fine, yeah. but they decided to give you uh, an extra part in in the the headstrong. So if you if yours is she, you can just replace the part, which I think is good. I mean, you're yeah. probably not just going to buy one of these. You're probably going to buy the set, and if you are just buying one of these. You're not going to use them in arm, arm mode, so who cares? Uh, but I'm I'm happy. I like it. I look forward to getting the rest of them when they come. Uh, and there's only two more to be released, and then I'll have a full Predaking. Mm, so a, giant cool. Predaking. a giant Predaking. A giant Predaking. No, they're not upscaled at all. Oh. They're the, they're the exact same size. I think it's because they're already fucking big. They decided not to make them <laughs> any True. bigger. Yeah. Uh, you know, because dive bombs... Uh... Just, I think he's a bit taller than Octane, who's a Voyager. He's not as big as Six Shot, who's obviously a leader, but he's he's kind of halfway in between their size, so mm. he's big. Uh, and if they upscaled it, I do, I like Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> There's one thing I do I do wish they changed, and I do wish it was they filled out the waist a bit more for Predaking mm. mode, but they haven't, and that's a shame. I'm a bit concerned that the uh, do you know how Predaking works, Mikey? No, nah, well, I've never handled him. But... Uh, right, you know the backpack, which is Dive Bomb's wings, effectively. Mm. Uh, the tail of Dive Bomb, which is a black tail, is the the center groin piece, uh, and then the waist, uh, the waist joint and abs are inside that that winged backpack on on the back of Dive Bomb. So it kind of unfolds that way. There is a bit of gold plastic. Now I don't know whether that means it's swirled or whatever, but when it when I turned the tail to make it, you know, to put it into the mode where you'd slide the legs into, it hmm. did stress the joint out a little bit, so there is a bit of a stress mark there from where I turned it. So I'm a bit worried in the future that that might cause problems, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, just have to wait and see. But I'm happy still. If something breaks, it was cheap. Yeah, and that's what you do when you get a knockoff. You need to be aware that. You know, there might be problems that happen. But the plastic quality wise feels fine. I don't know if it's any worse than what the proper thing is. Because I haven't handled it. <laughs> but I'm happy. No, it's good. It's got mm. some shitty stickers along with it, which I'm probably not going to apply. I think if you want to apply stickers uh, to Predaking, to a knockoff Predaking, probably just go for the Repro label ones because they're cheap enough and they're good quality. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's it then, Mr. Mikey. I don't think I've done anything um, very sensual apart from that this week. Sensual. Sensual. Just continuing on with a Kill the Kill, Mikey. Good man. That is a fucking good show, Mikey. <laughs> Jesus. Really? I had no idea. Jesus. it's It's been a real long time since I watched it, but man, I'm watching it again. I'm like, damn, this is fucking good. Does Mikey know? Has Mikey seen this show? <laughs> Tell, tell me, tell me. How yeah, see, it's a good fucking show, Mikey. <laughs> does it have a giant man? Uh, it does, who who varies in sizes dramatically all the time. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he's big enough for people to climb on. Sometimes he's just, uh, you know, maybe six foot tall. Yeah, but the key is he's always bigger than you. Yeah, uh, the last episode I had was the compilation episode. Oh, yeah. Where they explain everything, pretty much. Mm. It's good. It's good. I remember the first time I saw that. I was just like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Space. Why do we wear clothes, Mikey? <laughs> Parasites. Parasites from space. <laughs> it's weird. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it still doesn't really justify why they are finally doing a Figma Mako, but... Th- Fuck if it, they, let them. I, I will be disappointed. I don't think they will, but I will be disappointed if she doesn't come with a giant Osaka backpack and oh a God, propeller yes. hat. Yes. Uh, cause if they don't do that, they have to have the, uh, the Bancho Mako yeah, well, like, outfit. The ba- the thing is, like, if they're doing Figma Mako, like, you do Bancho or you do Osaka one. Cause that's yeah, the best Osaka one. Visitor. Yeah. 
Like, if you're not doing, giving me Bancho, you're going to give me the next best thing. Yeah, there, there has to be something there. Like, because she has a lot of dumb things that happen in oh the show. Oh my god, so film. many dumb things. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm. Good times. Uh, ooh, Mr. Mikey, before I ask you what you, oh, uh, where you're going. Sorry. What, what if mm. she had um, hands that could, like came with like money she'd been catching? <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> would, would she be splaying them open or would she be catching them from the air? Catching them like multiple, like it's like an arm, but like six arms coming out. Oh, of yeah. I'd like the idea of that. <laughs> See, I, like, I know Guts is nice to have, but I'd rather not have Guts and rather have more accessories for Mako. Yeah. Like guts is fine, but he ain't he ain't no uh, he ain't what you ain't buy Mako. the package for. No, no, you get that for Dot Mako. Yeah, she's a good Man. she's a good girl. She is a good girl. She's I'm not I'm not sure anyone's best girl in that show. But it's a fine she, show. It does not need a best girl. Exactly. There's no best girl. But Gamagori is best girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's quite nice to see every now and then, like when she stands up to him in his uh, Mark III armor, and she's just like standing on his leg, looking into his armor. She's like, "I ain't leaving, bitch. What are you gonna do?" <laughs> Mon Kosho, I need to. I need you Bye. to leave. Need you to leave. And she's like, "No, fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> I love how much it goes from like, "I will crush all of you," just like. Even you, I will crush. You're just like I don't know what to do with this situation. Yep, <laughs> I like you. I might, I might have deep feelings slowly brewing inside of me for you, bizarre, strange woman. <laughs> <laughs> Our children will be glorious <laughs> <laughs> and weird, <laughs> and probably of new unusual shapes. <laughs> oh, I want to see that. I want to see it ten years later, and just like they've got this one child who's just constantly doing ha- hallelujah moments for no reason. <laughs> So like, I made your food. Hallelujah. Stop that. You realize the girl would be the massive Ganmagori uh, take after yeah, the dad and the, the yeah. boy would take after Mako. Oh, yes, 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 please, please. That would be great. Uh, giant, giant, ma- giant girl Gamagori is, is like a life goal now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she needs to be exactly as dramatic as he is. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it takes but after it, a Again, dad. it needs to be like a family kind of like slice of life show. So they need to be in like the most normal situations. <laughs> and then she's just like bursting into the room. I have cleaned the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be fun. I'd like I that. I want to watch that. I want to watch that a lot. <laughs> Before I ask uh, you, Mr. Mikey, where mm. you can be found on the internet and all that jazz, mm. uh, we have uh, a message from the ever-known Tentomon number Did you say, Did you say Berserker Barrage? Berserker Barrage. <laughs> That's how you said Berserker Barrage. <laughs> Berserker Barrage. <laughs> uh, no, he never did anything else, really, that actor. Well, Gamagori. No, no, the Berserker Barrage guy. Oh, I was going to say, like, no, that's a bloody <laughs> lie. Gamagori's voice actor's been everywhere. <laughs> yeah, as he's here right now. It's like there's um, not a lot of voice... Well, there are voice actors in Japan, but th- th- there are some high-end voice actors. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's... Once you're once you're in there with voice acting in Japan, there is no escape. <laughs> no, exactly. Mm. Uh, we, before I go to Tenemon number four, there was a comment, oddly enough, uh, and nicely mm. enough, on the Weebly page for Moonbase 2 episode 541... Which hmm. was, I think, last week's episode. Pretty sure it was last week's episode. Uh, making Mikey lose his shit is the highlight of my week. Cheers, guys. <laughs> yeah, I you breaking down was pretty good. Was that Kole? Was that Kole Sutra? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. What um, is going on with the cow, Kole? Who knows? You, he knows. No one knows. He knows. I'm hopping over just to the, the, the Weebly page, because oddly enough, doesn't tell me in the email who it's from. It just says, you have a comment. Here is the comment. It's like, well, that's that's nice. But wouldn't it be nice if it told me who it was? Only one extra be- bit of... Yeah, Cole. 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 He will be Cole from now on. <laughs> okay, so question or uh, message from Tenomon mm. number four. As he pops out of my dumpster, his own dumpster, covered in empty uh, plastic sprues. Oh, shit. You're right. I totally forgot uh, to turn uh, those weird facts and slapstick into a question from last week, obviously. Mm. So do you think the reason why humans in the Pokemon world has superpowers is because of crossbreeding in ancient past, in the ancient past? So that's the question. Uh, and I'm not just talking. And I'm not just talking about psychic powers here, but also the fact that a lot of the NPCs in the game spend 
all of their time in the water. I, I think that just means that not not all of them, but some of them at least. Uh, there was an episode muscle atrophy. <laughs> <laughs> there was an episode of the anime that ended with uh, Gold Duck running off to pick up human chicks. Jesus, I don't remember that shit. I uh, do. Oh no. Because, uh, like, Misty thought it was her Psyduck that had evolved. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, uh, I do remember that. And it was oh. just some prick of a Golduck that was just, like, ladies. Yeah, it was just after puss. That's right. <laughs> or, or am I the only one that remembers that? No, clearly Mikey remembers that, too. Because <laughs> Mikey's a do- cause Mikey's a wrong and. <laughs> hey, I remember the episodes I haven't even seen, which are all the, the cancelled ones that yeah. didn't come out over here. Like, uh, hey, that time James had breasts. Yeah, that was never aired here, was it? And Dratini, Dratini had a gun or something like that. I don't remember that one. Like that was like the Safari, the Safari Zone one got. Uh, it didn't get aired here because someone had a shotgun. Oh Jesus! Which is why, like, <laughs> I remember like wondering where did all these Tauros come from? Because <laughs> Ash like had a billion of them. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> but they came out of nowhere because that air- episode never aired. Huh. I never. <laughs> went. Okay. Cool. Mm. Uh, also, Andy, Mikey is right. Let that sink in. <laughs> That's the first time for everything. So. <laughs> uh, why are you right, though, Mikey? Uh, because Renamon is one of the furry queens. Be proud that you know that, Mikey. Uh, but I don't get why she... I've been she... into Digimon long enough. <laughs> but I don't get why she is that popular. Sure, I can see why people would like a submissive badass with cool powers. Uh, great figure ne- and... Hang on. Hmm? Hang on. I would never call Re- Renamon submissive. That's what it says like, here. I'm just alpha what bitch says. might be a bit more accurate. But... <laughs> uh, a great figure and the full uh, and the full f- the fluff. Sorry, the fluff factor. I don't know the fluff factor. You must know that goes over my head. I, okay. I mean, I can probably logic I could it guess, out. But... Yeah, uh, but that doesn't explain why she uh, why she has double the picks of Crystal from Star Fox Adventures. Does that make sense? Blue fox from yeah yeah no yeah it's the the blue the blue fox from um what was that really non light star fox game that oh, one god do you, do you know who I mean though vague I I've got an image of a fox but I don't know if it's the right one yeah uh star fox adventures has and she was made lewd just uh, listen to a theme song oh yeah I heard this theme song and I thought it was a joke because I hadn't read the question it's it mm. it just sounds like fucking porno music. <laughs> I'll send it to you. It has a picture of Crystal on it as well. It it right. li- like it legit just sounds like porno music. Like, is, this her- new, new. <laughs> is this actually her theme song, or is this what like people want her? Yeah, I remember her. Yeah, I remember her. See, I I can only assume Tendermon sent as the the actual theme because it it sounds like a joke, doesn't it? It sounds like there's oh no way that, that would be used, right? Like th- that's t- oh that's just, my god, that is the most that's porno what, music, right? Ron Jeremy, Ger- Ron Jeremy, just just like rising from his bed, is like must go. He feels like he's being summoned. <laughs> uh, so it continues. So is it just me, or is that yif in the music? Is that yif in music form? Uh, and yes, several Let's Play Pokemon has made a joke already. Uh, oh, and one last question: What do you think of? King, of the kings of what who sorry who do you think the kings of furry are uh you have fun thinking about that i'm gonna go and recycle all these plastic bags and think about how hunky the biker mice from mars was by what one of them a fish no 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 i think he means the actual mice rather than oh, the mice. fucking not not um the guy who's building <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea. It's like, ooh, you mean the hunky mice? No, nah, I mean the fucking gross fish man. <laughs> yeah, that um, overweight motherfucking see, fish boy. I don't boy. know how to contribute to this because I watch a lot of anime. So anytime I encounter anyone who up beyond the furry scale, it's usually female. Mm-hmm. Um. So the question there's a, is: There's first... an anime coming out in October that I guarantee will have someone of that ilk. Okay, well, answer uh, the first part of the question, Mikey, mm. which was about the uh, how do the uh, humans in the Pokemon world have superpowers or have powers beyond that of normal men or well, women? I, I, like, I'll, like the swimming one, that's just people with no common sense. Yeah, see, I would say um, that they are susceptible to the, the, the follies of the water as everybody else, because to be fair, I'm sure that they prune up like any other person. <laughs> yeah, and like, I guarantee if they ever tried to get out of the water, they'd just be like pulling themselves by their arms. 
because their legs would be so dead. Um, <laughs> That's a depressing but, thought. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I'm trying to think. Pokemon games with people with special powers. And there are psychic people. There are the there, people that, that talk with the. Uh... In... Hmm. What I think it's X Y. You just because there's just this old because it was the one game I got really into before I gave up on the whole thing. Um, there was this guy called A. I think his name was. That's a stupid name. Yeah, it was. But he was like, "Oh, I've been I'm hundreds of years old, and I might be some sort of magic king." Um, I don't mm. know. I don't know a lot like, enough about Pokemon people with superpowers. Mm. Um, like I think anyone who lived on those volcano islands must have had some sort of superpower because yep. many of them were inside a volcano. Yeah, and they didn't die from fumes or you know heat. You had to go through the magma trials before you could actually move into the volcano. Is that why not many people live there? Because most of them just died. <laughs> Because that'd be pretty fucking bleak of a story. <laughs> I remember there was one game. I rem- there, yeah, 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 in yellow and and that generation, like the 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 sequel stuff. Mm. No, gold silver, gold silver. Um, you go back and it turns out the volcano erupted, and like it never really touched on that. How many people died? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> could could like a wall of magma block lava? Like, if, if they like, locked arms, could they, like, stop lava from... Like, could... If you got, like, a load of onyxes... On, onyxi? Mm. Whatever the whatever the plural yeah. for onyx are. And you got them to just lie down. Could they stop the flow of lava? Or would they die because at some point they would just die? Well, I think the magmar would their lava proof. I, 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 I chose... Um, yeah. I chose onyx after that because I thought, yeah. you know, they're a pile of rocks and they would fill in holes better. Magmar would have a trouble, like, interlocking so they, there wouldn't be gaps in between them. There's just one Steelix in the middle and he's just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hot! <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, I don't know, because there's gaps. So... They, they'd still get leakage, and once there's gaps, they, the the force would get through. Mm. Um, I don't know. Someone get an onyx and test us. Yeah, it's not cruel. Mm. Nah, it's fine. They they fight putting them, them in to a the small, death. Yeah, we're putting them in a small ball where they don't get food, and no. then we throw throw that ball and then make them fight complete strangers. No, no, Mikey, they get candy. Oh, good. Just candy. <laughs> I want to eat some meat. No, I'd have to kill another Pokemon. That's it. You have to kill Pokemon to feed Pokemon. I have all this candy. No more candy, master. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I have these. I have iron. You can have iron. What happened to all of my Pidgey friends? Here's some more candy. <laughs> <laughs> Radita, what happened? It's just got their faces on it. <laughs> Is it, do, you, do you think uh, the the Pokemon machine that ground them up and turned them into candy was based <laughs> off of Martian Boo? <laughs> like, someone saw like maybe Dragon Ball Z exists as an anime in their in their world, and they saw that and went, "Sure, we could turn Pokemon into candy." I don't know. I, I don't want to think about. it. I think the Martian Boo saga was long enough. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, okay, then, Mikey, who are the kings of the furries? Since you found a queen, who's a who's a king of furries? Since you know we- things. I saw years... This was... God, I don't know how many years ago. Meowth. No, God, no. Meowth's not even the king of Pokemon. <laughs> um, He's got money on his head. He's a cat. He, People like cats. He, he has a coin. Yeah. You get fucking you know, rich from he that. He can't even use the money move. <laughs> like, the, the one thing to make him useful, he can't do. <laughs> Meowth fucking sucks. <laughs> and he knows it. Ooh! I know, I know, I know. Mm. He, here's a not really, but sort of legit one. Mm. Do you remember Captain Simeon and the Space Apes? Is it wrong to say yes? Yeah, it's the captain <laughs> from that show. Oh my god, I haven't thought about that in so long. You know what, Mikey? No one has. I, rem- <laughs> I remember a time when I was looking through the Argos catalogue. It was probably before yeah. Christmas on my yeah. birthday. And I was like, I want oh. those toys. Oh my god, you're giving me fucking war flashbacks. Yeah, did you want those toys as well? Yeah, did you? I did. I'm really glad I never got them. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want them still now. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think of... Because like, I'm, I'm just thinking about a bunch of werewolves right now. <laughs> like um, uh, does that say more about you than anything else? Uh, I wonder. I'm just trying to think what animes and shows I've seen with male furries in them. Mm. 
Like, there was an anime I saw a year... Like, it was, like, an OVA where, like, animal people from another world came in and then they turned into kaiju. So that I think that's why I watched it. <laughs> okay, um, so sure. of like a wolf and he turned like I'm a wolf knight now I'm a giant wolf knight and I'm just like that works better for me like to be honest <laughs> um, but I, I can't even remember the name of that so it won't be that like I said there's an anime coming out in October called Beastars which I guarantee you will probably like if it doesn't it, it's going to do something to uh, the general anime fandom it's definitely going to do something to the anime furry fandom okay they're going to die hmm um, because also, like, I've been reading the manga, and it's quite mature. Um, but, yeah, that's not until October. And, like, every other example I can think of is an animal girl of some sort that just randomly showed up. I, like, I'm just going into Monster Mercima now, and I'm just like, they don't even count. No. Because they're they're not quite the same thing, are they? No, I suppose not, no. They're, they're more like, here's an animal, half of it's gone, and here's a woman. <laughs> 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 But we made sure to t- she, we made sure that the animal stops just before the interesting part. Mm. Oh, except with, the ho- except with the centaur, which is something they never really go into. <laughs> here's a here's a one, Mikey. How about the cat genie from the Sentai show or the Power Rangers? Oh episode? yes, yes, that yes, thing. yes, from Magic from um, Magic Ranger. Yeah, yes. maybe, maybe that would be one. Ankh. There we go. No, I got a better one than Ankh. Uh, oh, yeah. the guy that clicks from Cure Uja. Yeah, Torin. Torin. Nice. There you go. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I'm liking it. Uh, these are yeah, because I guarantee you. Let's. I'm going to do something for the sake of Don't everyone else. For porn, um, Mikey. I am searching to see if there is sexy Torin art out there. Oh no. <laughs> Yo, you files Cure. my documents. Sexy. <laughs> sexy <History> bird. <laughs> They were okay. Uh, muscle Torin, oh, first no. row. You must see the muscle Torin. Also, they're just like Torin's to. actor with a lovely hat. And, uh, <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Behold yep. my lovely hat. Yep, I'm just saving this one for you, Andy. Thank right, you. This is going to be on my hard drive. <laughs> this is here. I want uh, everyone to know I am doing this for the sake of everyone. I wish your sister like, would walk in now, or your mom, or your dad, or something. They will see, too. Oh, no. <laughs> if I must see, so will they. Let their yeah. eyes burn. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tentamon, like, look for Torin from Kyoruja, and you have found it. <laughs> it hasn't came through yet. Not on my it's end. Tr- yep. I'm I'm just looking at Kamen Rider toys at the moment. Look, look at the pictures, Andy. Uh, it hasn't came through. It sent. Not on Skype, at least. Oh, oh God, Skype. Are you sending it to other people? <laughs> <laughs> Alex Mills sends a message back. What the fuck <laughs> is this shit? Oh, there it is. It's popped through. Oh Jesus! <laughs> it looks like someone stuck in um like a, a, a an inflator for a balloon and just kind of chunked him up. That was just from Sexy Tor and Kyoruja. Jesus. So, well, there you go. There, 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 there oh, are some also answers. an up sh- an upskirt shot of Kyoruja Violet. Okay, yeah. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want uh, questions like this and more answered via us on the... Please <laughs> <laughs> ask other questions. For the love of God, ask other questions. <laughs> it's nice to have questions, Ooh, though. I, Andy, we forgot one. Oh? We f- why didn't we think of it? Uh-huh. There is what there is probably what if we're going like with these Toku things. There is really only one uh, furry king, um, and I think we're very foolish to have forgotten them. I'm trying to think who you could be meaning. You'll you'll see. You could just say no. I'll take forever. Oh no, I didn't. My God. Oh, Doggy Kruger, of course. Yeah. 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 He that failed. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> he's the OG fairy he, king, I suppose. He he's yeah, uh, yeah. We failed. Yeah. Oh well, there you well, go. To be fair, you can't sexualize doggy. He's too much. <laughs> you no, know, well, I, I think if you go onto the internet, there will be many a person to prove you wrong, Mikey. <laughs> but there is only one person who could take doggy, and she was a bird lady. That's true. Yeah, sw- swan. Yep. Who appeared as a uh, they are... woman most of the time. Con- confirm know. they're married, by the way, in one of the specials. Ah, huh. well, there you go. So, good for him. Mikey, where can people find you on the internet if they want to? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
too much. It becoming too much. <laughs> I never looked this stuff up until I started talking to you people. Sure. <laughs> Where, what was going on with the cow acting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, there's probably bloody furry art of that cow. <laughs> mm, that specific cow. Um... Right, you can find me on Twitter as Irish Paleo. You can find me on YouTube as you will, please. Sorry. If you want to send us feedback, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can send it on our Gmail account, the moonbase2 at gmail.com. You can send it to us on Twitter. You can send it to us on Facebook. If you're on Patreon, we appreciate any messages you send there. And apparently, you can send it on Weebly as well. So we'll be happy to hear from you on that one. Um, keep in touch. Ask anything you'd like. Clearly, we'll answer anything. Yeah, we have no shame. <laughs> no, we are apparently Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. Yep. I'm D- Daffy. I think that's fair. <laughs> oh, fuck yourself, Andy. <laughs> Fight them, Mikey. <laughs> Say, Tell them that they're wrong, honestly. Oh, you want me to go up to them? You do realize, of course, this means war. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, dear. People, the people are right, Mikey. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> You're a bad person. It could be worse. They could have said Pepe Le Pew and the cat. <laughs> so, David, which one do you want to be? Uh, oh, I'm I'm certainly the cat. Constantly <laughs> running for my life. <laughs> Leave me alone! <laughs> and you have the more, accent, to be fair. I always saw you more of the Yosemite. <laughs> what, just with a giant moustache? <laughs> just firing me guns away? <laughs> I could, I could yep. live that life. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I hate that rabbit. <laughs> I hate that Mikey. Oh, uh, you can't see that on TV anymore. I well, think not as regular. Like you, I think Tunes. it's on. Bo- yeah, I think it's on Boomerang sometimes, but um, Irish TV it's off, and I'm really sad oh, about that. That's a because, bummer. Yep. So I'm going to buy all the box sets and then make my niece watch it. Yeah, good. And she'll watch Tom and Jerry too because she needs to see what it was like when people had fun. Were they ever put on Blu-ray? No just idea, standard. actually. Because I, I know I, that they do the standard version of Looney Tunes, but I don't know if they ever did Blu-ray. Honestly, don't know. My, I'm always my favorite era of Tom and Jerry was one of the earlier ones where, um, for some reason, during the intro, you had uh, Tom going... Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the art style was really different. Mm. I like those ones for some reason, though the Don't You Believe It is, like, nightmarishly good. <laughs> Don't you, you believe, believe it? it. <laughs> that was so good. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember when people said that those were the th- reasons why there was violence in the world, and now it's moved uh, over to video games? It's odd, Andy. It's like people are saying violence exists for all the reasons except quote my fault. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, <laughs> that. Hi, you've you've mentioned everything, haven't you? Where people yeah, can find you? Yeah. What about you? you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter as cctfw on YouTube as Cobra Commander TFW. You can find this podcast on the Moonbase Two forums, on Twitter, iTunes, Facebook, Libsyn, and YouTube as Moonbase Two Transformers Podcast. Uh, you can have head over to patreoncom slash moonbase 2 Do two dollars each month, and you'll get the extended version of From the Files of Teletron Two, which will be out. Do not worry. Uh, well, the free version, the Patreon version, is already out. Uh, And you'll get the uh, Moonbase Woo Woo, uh, which, as mentioned, we'll be uh, talking about generally 13 movies. Well, uh, 11 Star Trek movies. So that's that's a decent amount. It's a decent length show. Um, Did you do Galaxy Quest? It's not a Star Trek movie. It's basically a Star Trek movie. It's frequently but it's not... played as a Star Trek movie at conventions and oh, sure. yeah. is used to prove, prove the odd even real. The audio. Oh yeah, uh, it isn't Star Trek licensed. Then how's that? Third party Star Trek. It is a th- it is a three P Star Trek show, <laughs> like the Orville. Yeah, yeah. I need to start watching season two of that. At some I point. hear it's good. I hear it's picked up. Uh, I still have a feeling Seth MacFarlane. Uh, <laughs> Seth MacFarlane. Uh, Seth whatever his name is. Uh, MacFarlane. Is- Oh, it is McFarlane. Oh. Yeah. I thought I was I was I was doing a wrongo, and I was doing the McFarlane from the. Todd McFarlane. Whoops. Oh, it's spelled the same. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm sure he probably still ha- is not great because he's not a very good actor. He, he's great in every other aspect of that show, but he should not be a character in it. What, where he's going for dramatic scenes? And then it undercuts them with humor. I think it's... that show would be much better at cutting out the humor. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I like, that's weird, really, because we're funny guys. 
funny looking, but you know, yeah. that's about it. Uh, you can also head over to ccbunker.weebly.com as well if you want to just oh. grab the show that way. Uh, so, Mr. Mikey, I guess uh, we'll call this the show, and I will uh, see you next week, probably. See Talk to you, you then. out there. Because when about uh, the the comics? When are we doing comics? This, uh, oh do you God, know? it's going to be late again because it's we're we're waiting that's for the double do. week. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I would expect like if you are a fan of the comic show, our schedule for when the show comes out is just going to change based on you know yeah, when the two yeah. comics come out. Because we ain't going to do one show for when one comic comes out and then another show for when the other comic comes out. It's ridiculous. We ain't doing and that. <laughs> the the pace are going at as well. Like we wouldn't have enough to talk about. No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Slow. Slow. Uh, so, uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. See you new. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.